Thanks for you there. That's uh, uh, Coldplay here. They're live through there. Thanks. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, uh, yeah, brilliant. Do you want to? Do you want to say a few words? Do you want to? Yeah, say no, I'll have a quick word with Chris, uh, lead singer Chris. Chris, good to have you here. Hello. <laughs> and um, um, how's it going with Gwyneth Paltrow? Brilliant. Yes. yes. She's uh, a lovely lady. Yeah, no, I thought so, yeah. I saw her in Shakespeare in Love. She's good she in good. that, yeah, isn't she? Yeah, so if you would pass that on to her, just yeah, say well, I'm joking. Yeah, um, um, it's going all right. You going to get married to her? Yeah, so I'm, I marry either her or that Julia Roberts going, woman. Yeah, either one is good. Yeah. Um, um, I know, I know, I know you're on holiday at the moment in yeah. Hawaii. I read in the no, paper today. No, You're actually here. I'm actually here. <laughs> okay. Um, Got to uh, go now. Got to go. All right, just a couple of questions. We'll see you later, Chris. Yes, see you, Ricky. So that's the sort of guests. That's the caliber of guests. So we're just trying to up Just like Jonathan Ross. We've got guests like Jonathan Ross. That's Coldplay, just popped in. Just popped so in. So if you're the Sony people listening, you might Brilliant. Wanna... And we've still got Carl to take off my sock for 20 quid. Okay? Let's do it now. Let's just get it over with and do it now. Come on, Carl. Let's get our cash out then, Nick. There's ten pounds right no, there. No, no, no. No, you don't owe him because he owes you ten, so I just have to pay him ten. Okay. Yeah. So, go on then. Just not, take- Not whilst Coldplay are here. <laughs> <laughs> They've, they've had to shoot off. <laughs> Come no, on. I don't want to do it. Let's why not? Tell me what- We've been on now for half an hour. Okay, okay. Why won't you do it? It's ridiculous. You won't have a shower, you won't take my shoes and socks off, you won't do anything. You won't get, give Dale wouldn't rub down. What will you do, for Christ's sake? I don't want to- I don't want to do it. Certainly mum and dad are, are, are like, I've heard about how well I'm doing in London. Yeah. <laughs> Right? They've heard about, you know, the Sony Awards and that. They're yeah. talking to the mates, they're saying Carl's doing well for himself. Yeah. Let's have a listen to him on Sky. Yeah. They're tuning in, I'm taking off socks for money. What's it with that? That'll be the first time that anyone in your family has actually made, you know, money without stealing, thieving, yeah. or it's an honest, some kind of atrocity. Let's just do it quick then, because it's getting on my nerves. It's actually annoying. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, all right. Yeah, well, you can you... Honestly, uh, no, you... Well, he's just taking a ten yeah, off me. Right, okay. Okay. Right, okay. Let's go like that. You've got to do it properly. You don't have to do that. You've got to do it properly. No, you've got to do it properly. Go ahead, do it properly. Just gently. I can't see what's happening. Just pretend I'm working on shop. There's nothing normal. Just Come on, just get it done. What's that? What's whistling? What's the whistling? <laughs> right. Okay, now do it properly, gently. Yes. <laughs> it's a sweaty trainer, which just makes right, it all the more. Just right. gently caress it, caress it. There's someone watching in the office. Caress it there. Don't just right. gently ease the shop. Just like working on a shoe shop. There's nothing. Nothing weird about it. Just gently yeah, ease it off. Right. I'm gonna burst. All right. Now it's just. Right, now, just come on, gently do it. Don't just, just rip it off. Down, yeah. Yeah. Slowly, slowly well, tease it. Tease it. Enjoy no, now wait a minute, you've got to say, <laughs> so you've got to say, about my ankle. so you've got lovely toes and I love your ankle. you got nice toes and that. <laughs> well, say it properly. I don't like it anymore. Do it, and you've got right. to say, you've got <laughs> to, you've got to say for the tenor, otherwise oh, you're taking it back, you've God. got to say what lovely ankles you've got, but in a sweet, seductive voice. Right. <laughs> right, you've got nice ankles. <laughs> that is not how you would seduce a woman. Like you that. would not seduce a woman like that, Carl. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Suzanne. I don't <laughs> That. I don't know. I don't feel good about Move it. Move it off, because I want to see if we can get him to massage your toes. <laughs> see, I don't know what's worse. I, do, I mean, I didn't like the feeling much. That wasn't very nice, because it was all, it was all rough, and I, I, you know, and he's a, he's a skinhead, and he's playing on the feet. And then I thought, oh, I've degraded him, so I don't know what I feel worse about. I'll, you can keep the tenor that you owe me if you massage his toes. No, I'm not doing that. No, no, no we paid him. He's done it. Yeah, the, the shoes are back on. We're, we're somewhere else next week. Somewhere else next week. Okay. So, if you'd like to, Carl to humiliate himself for money, email in. Well, Suzanne was surprised that I was like last night. I told her about it. And I told <laughs> oh, why did you do that? I don't feel. I don't know what I feel now. That's, that's not good. I don't know. That's not good, is it? And she just said, "Well, you know." Uh, you don't like <laughs> chucking money away and that. And it was funny because we got talking about uh, when, when we bought our first flat in Manchester, right? Uh, <laughs> I, bought a, I bought a bed, right? I didn't have much money. And uh, what annoyed me is I bought the bed and it turned up and I said, where's the mattress? And they said, well, you don't get, you don't get a mattress with the bed, you've got to buy that separately. And I was like, well, that's not a bed then, right? <laughs> so I didn't have any more money. Suzanne's at work, so I thought, well, I don't want to stress her out at work and that, mm. so I know we haven't got a mattress for the bed. I had a word with my dad, right? He knew a mate who had one in the back of a van, right? He said, I'll have a word with him, he'll let you have it. Got the van, brought it round, stunk a diesel and that, but I thought, <laughs> well, it's, it's free, it'll do. 
Yeah. <laughs> they brought it up, they stuck it in the spare room. <laughs> Suzanne got home, she looked at the bed, she said, that looks all right. She wears the mattress, so it's in the next next room, but I thought I won't tell her because sure. she won't like the idea. She went in, just the room stunk of, like, petrol fumes <laughs> and that. Yeah. She said, what, what's going on? <laughs> I said, well, it's... A mattress didn't come with a bed. So I've sorted you one out, I've got this off my dad. Yeah. And... We didn't have one night on it. She said, get rid of it. Yeah. I had to go and ditch it. I don't know what she was thinking. <laughs> one of your father's friends is driving around in a van with a mattress in the back. <laughs> yeah. Was he a serial killer? <laughs> I mean... And she <laughs> didn't want to sleep on it. Let's have some silence of the lamb. What kind of a cheapskate is she? What kind of a woman is she? That she won't sleep on a mattress that has been in the back of a transit van. That's yeah, because it was like yeah. Covered in petrol, diesel, probably urine, and Christ <laughs> knows what else. Yeah. Oh. So, you know, would you swap pants with Steve for 50 quid now? You don't have to look at him, you go in the toilet, he, ta he takes his pants off in the toilet, leaves them there, you go in, <laughs> right, you come up with your trousers on, you go in, right, take your pants off, put his pants on, leave your pants in the toilet, come out, you've got his pants on, he goes in there, you come out and you swap pants. At the end of the show you put it back. How much? When you say pants, what do you mean? Just do underpants, underpants. No, I'm not doing underpants. Why? Why not? Seriously, these were fresh on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, but, but For I the mean, BAFTAs. For the, uh, awards, the Sony's. Do you know what I mean? But, I mean, just name your price. It's gonna be more than 20 quid. It's gonna be more than 20 quid. It's gonna be, it's gonna be like 80 quid upwards, I think. No, clean on today. They yeah. were clean on today in their boxes. It's as bad for him as you. Don't, don't remember that. Thanks for that. 50 quid? Really? Play record. No, hang on. You just said you'll give me 50 quid. If you go and swap pants. I don't know what's in it for me, I don't know why I'm doing this. It started off as torturing Carl, but not only am I out of pocket, I don't actually want you two to swap pants or touch my ankles. Well, Steve isn't I don't know what no. I've done. This is, I, 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 I'm the victim here. I've paid out and I don't even like it. Play a record, I want to think about this. Could, I mean, <laughs> I've got 50 quid if you... <laughs> as long as we can swap the pants but both be in the room at the same time. Band of Gold by the artist who featured in, uh... Uh, a recent Rockbuster uh, clue, which was, I think, uh, uh, the Jamaican fella needs an aspirin for his head, and that goes, of course, to free the pain. <laughs> Brilliant. Rockbuster's coming up, isn't it, Carl? We, uh, we we set up now? Get it, get it going? No, let's, 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 no, let's I thought we it. weren't doing this anymore. I know, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know, know. I, I mean, <sighs> But I mean, it's, I mean, we're shooting off in a couple of weeks, so. Yeah. What difference yeah. does it make? Well, we might, we might as well. Now you've mentioned it, it's a good time. Go on then. Right. Uh, three cryptic, cryptic clues, like the one you just heard there. No. Uh, first one. Cryptic. <laughs> that is cryptic a um, word. First one. My younger brother spotted you the other day. Right. That's the cryptic clue. My younger brother spotted you the other day. The initials J S, J S for the band. Second one. Uh, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. <laughs> <laughs> the way he looks up, like, it's Oscar Wilde. Yeah. It's, oh. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid, the initials are A-M. And the third one, uh, the vibrators. And the initial B. What? Right? The vibrators. And the initial is B. So the first one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Oh, I know that one, that's ridiculous. J-S. The phone's going. Second one, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid, mm. AM. And the third one, the vibrators, the initial B. So, email in and you win. You can say the prizes later, can't you? Well, I tell you what, this is terrible. I mean, we, we didn't even say the prizes, we weren't going to do this. The phones go in. Look at the phones, a guy mental. Right, well, Carl, well, did you ever do paintings and drawings at school and then bring them home and your mum put them on the fridge? Uh, no, not really. I never brought them home. What, did you just screw them up and throw them in the bin? I just left them at school. Yeah. I never had a bag. <laughs> right. <laughs> Radiohead. They're there on XFM 104.9. You see, no way. What well, this is giving me an idea because um, I think what the best thing about this show is what happens when the records are playing. Because mm. we we sort of we, uh, that's an example in particular. Yeah. Didn't have anything planned. Well, I started my mouth moving, but I didn't have anything planned. Yeah. Like, Why was that? Why, why didn't you have anything planned there? What? Why, why didn't you know what you were going to say then? 
Cos... What were you doing when Radiohead was on? <laughs> I, well, I made Carl a new uniform that he has to wear in the second hour. What did I do? You got tissue paper. Yeah. Toilet roll, yeah. Ripped a bit off. Yeah. Made a little tie for me. <laughs> and put some in my ears. <laughs> yeah! So he had earplugs and matching tie. <laughs> yeah. And he looked good, didn't he? Yeah. He had earplugs and matching tie and I- and, uh, I squeezed it in there and he went, I can't, it'll irritate me. Mm. So, mm. I'm thinking of things all the time to make this more fun for me. <laughs> yes. And it is just like that. Can but I- sorry, a quick question. Um, just want to raise- Steve, just want to raise a little point. Go on. Um, you say that you're spending most of your time thinking about how you can make this more entertaining for yourself. Yeah. I, is it worth ever considering the listeners? Well, I think that if- if- If you're I, happy, they're happy. Yeah. I'm not sure that's true. I, I've been monitoring a lot of the feedback on the email and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't appear to be the case. But that's because Carl won't go along with stuff. Sure. I mean, they could see on the webcam his little uh, matching- matching earplugs and tie that I made. Mm. I just did a cartoon that went for £350, right, on yeah. the- in on the website, right? Mm. So mm. that's- that's one now, yeah, we're gonna do it- we're gonna make it really good, we're gonna give him lots of stuff and sign DVDs and everything, so that's great. 350 quid. Who was it? Uh, I think her name was Joanne. It's not definite yet, cos we haven't got the money off her. Well, Dom, she's, 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 I, I, you know, you got to trust them, haven't you? Um, and so, I, I think people would love to have had a matching, you know, I'd have signed it and everything. Little matching earplugs and necktie made out of toilet roll. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he and he doesn't don't want to wear it. But I had a great idea for a show, right? We filmed the behind the scenes, right, of each show. Mm -hmm. So you know, you get a, the, you know, the, a CD of what went out, but you saw what happened behind the scenes, right? And it follows us through a week, right? And it's called X Men Three. Ah, uh, I see, because of XFM. Yeah. Right. And then we can film all Carl, what Carl looks like when I'm squeezing his head, what what he's like when we're trying to make him touch us, mm. all that sort of stuff. When he's getting all stressed out in the day, and we just pop up, right? The what he looks like, his little head, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And would this be broadcast on TV? Or? I think so. I right. think Choice. So like BBC okay. Three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I again. It's difficult because I, I, I mean, I'm very much in the the centre of the storm. I'm very much the eye of the storm. Yeah. And I know that I myself would not want to watch that. Really? No, because it's any I mean, negative, Carl. He was like this when you came up with cheapest chimps. Uh, he didn't. He wanted to drop rockbusters. What was the other thing he didn't like? Uh, um, that other TV idea I had. Yeah, what, putting a baby in a room, setting it on fire and see if he can make his way out? Setting the room on fire. Let's yeah. not get silly. Yeah. No, no, no. But yeah. he didn't like that, did he? No. I mean, I don't. I don't want to sort of. I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but it does seem to me that my criticism of those things is probably justified. I mean, cheapest chimps. Yeah. Where is it now? Well, it's Donald McIntyre took it. Well, not really, Carl. Not really. It is, but um, a, a pitiful <laughs> memory. Um, yeah. your, both your game show ideas terrible. This TV show idea, I think, again, it's only interesting to you, Rick. This is what you fail to realise. You've got no sense of the greater public. They don't. They, to be honest, I'm, I'm just taking this from what people are emailing in. They're not interested. See, Carl. I don't read the emails. They're not interested in Carl. I, I don't read the emails. They're not interested in Carl. They're not interested in Carl. But if we did a documentary about him, like they did about Oliver. The, the, the human Z, or no, that's a different case. Or that the girl that was older than her mum, or, you know, all those other sort of things. I mm. think if we actually did a definitive documentary and got in doctors to talk about him, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. showed him- That psychiatrist from Big Brother. Yeah, and just talked about it and then showed him in his environment. I think it would be- I think it would be brilliant. I think it would be a brilliant show. But I think that's interesting. I think you're right. Uh, some kind of anthropological study of Carl, fascinating. You making a little necessity well, for uh, him, I'm not so convinced. But that will be part of it. Play record, let's think about this, because I think this is an idea. If any broadcasters are listening, like Greg Dyke or, um, you know, we'd even go to Channel 5 with this, I think. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, alternatively, if you'd like to, uh, incorporate Carl into some kind of Blue Peter appeal. Let's do so much. Let's just get Carl. Look at his face. How could you not. See, a lot of people still don't know what you look like, Carl. Play record. Turing Breaks, Painkiller on XFM 104.9. A couple of emails, Rick, that I ought to notify you about. Um, Holly is emailed in. She wants us to wish her good luck. She says that she's one of 15,000 women who will be walking uh, 26 miles around London starting at midnight tonight in their bras to raise money for breast cancer research. Prostitutes? Uh, no, 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 just regular ladies, I think. Oh, right. Um, but I, I was at a loose end, so that's something for me to do. <laughs> 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 I'll, uh, no, I'll, I'll pop down and, and, and support them. Um, um, also, we've got to we say hello to uh, Sonia, who's uh, it's her 18th birthday, and we're going to play 
a little Smiths track for her, like, so we're, it's a, we're trying, we're trying to- Be interactive. Yeah. Um, I've seen how other DJs do it, their phones, they go, and, uh, what are you, how are you celebrating tonight? Oh, we're just going out, Foxy. Uh, have a good time. Here we go. This is, you know what I mean? Yeah. We've got to be, I've guessed, we had, we had Chris Martin in from Coldplay, which is going to be a lot- of Well, Chris is still here. Hello. <laughs> uh, Chris, how did you come up with the ideas for your songs? Just make them up in my head with the guitar. And, um, how old are you now? Twenty-eight. Thanks very much for that. More from Chris Martin later, I imagine. Cheers. And we've also um, had, uh, cheers. an email- <laughs> Thanks, Chris. We've also had an email from Jim. <laughs> it's as easy as that. <laughs> we've had an email from Jim. He says, uh, on the subject of the postcards, his brother once met the bloke who posed for the photo on those biros that when you tip them up, the black ink so it kind of sinks away, and right. it shows him nude. And he was apparently an aspiring model, and he got paid $75 for it in Hong Kong in the 70s. Carl, would you have done that? Would you pose mo nude for a pen for $75? I mean, inflation's gone up. Let's uh, double it every ten years, say. So, yeah, uh, so 150, uh, 300. I'll give you 600 quid to post news for, for biros that we give away for XFM. An XFM biro, where your clothes sink away when you turn it upside down. And what sort of shape was this fella in? He's look? in pretty good shape, yeah, I think. Uh, 600 quid. Yeah. I'll make it back on selling the pens. No, I wouldn't do that. No. I always remember being at school, uh, when I, the first time I ever encountered one of those pens. There was a kid at school, Jason, and he had a, I had a pen, one of those pens, and he turned it upside down, and it was where the woman's clothes sink away and she's naked. Yeah. And I remember sort of seeing it, and him showing it to everyone, all the young lads, and them thinking, this is amazing. And, um, and I always remember thinking it was like the idea that it was sort of a way to cheat teachers. Oh, there's Jason, he's just got a pen there with a picture of a woman yeah. wearing some clothes. That's fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. If he brings a porn mag in, I'll have him. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, but I can't- But no. I've always imagined, can you imagine, imagine how embarrassing would it be to be, to be caught masturbating over one of those pens? <laughs> Business man. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, his wife catches him. <laughs> no, you know, to sort of, um, I'm sort of, oh, oh, sorry, so what are you doing? Just- I'm just doing some writing with this, this regular pen. Right, what? Well, no, don't, don't, don't turn it upside down. Ah. Can I just come round where you're sitting and just say, <laughs> why are you naked? The only thing I think more embarrassing would be to call, be caught masturbating looking into a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you maybe, for me and Carl, you're right. <laughs> um, uh, should we should give the Rockbusters clues again one for, final time before we, um, we give out the answers. And All I should right. mention the prizes as well, <laughs> if you still want to enter. Uh, we've got some various things, a couple of CDs, a small shit <laughs> CD. Right, looking into a mirror. Uh, let's move on from that. Club Anthems 2003, Strange and Beautiful. Nude. Hey? I hate being nude anyway. Why? What do you mean you hate being nude? Uh, it's not normal if you walk about. Do you walk about the house without on? No, because we've got windows. Yeah, but, alright, with the blinds shut or whatever. Well, I have a bath. No, no, but say shit. like, say like with, you know, with, with Jane and that. Are you happy walking about? No, I just think, no, I, I, I walk around in my pants or a towel. I won't, I won't purposely walk around nude for the sake of it, no. <laughs> no, I know, so, but, but, but I, in the morning I don't mind when I get up. So yeah. I go for a shower. But I don't sort of flaunt it about. I just wondered if that's normal or... Well, no, I, what do you mean? Is it normal? If, if, if there's no one can see you, then... No, like, but, but your girlfriend's in and that. But what I mean well, is... Yeah. It's like... You, you can put a pair of pants on, can't you? Do you know, all I'm saying is- Well, you put Steve's on if you want. <laughs> yeah, for 30 quid. What do you want? Do, what, do, you want, do you want to put a pair of pants on now? <laughs> no, it's just like you're asking me to do it for a pen. What would you do, right? What would you do, right, if, um, you did that thing with Steve and you put left your pants in there, you went and you put his on, but there's, it was sort of like, it was damp. Right, so Rockbusters then, we'll get yeah. this out of the way, right? Uh, the so the one. prizes, Carl. I've uh, mentioned there's a number of CDs. We've also got Wild Weather, um, a fascinating uh, it looks like two VHS set about weather, <laughs> about various weather conditions around the world. That must be selling like hotcakes. Uh, Sean Lloyd could be in that now. Yeah, indeed. He, and um, also signed by Norman. It's Fat Boy Slim's Big Beach Boutique. That must have been troublesome for um, the station that <laughs> that has uh, you know close ties with Norman to get hold of. But well done. And uh, that's Fat Boy Slim Big Beach Boutique. So yeah, there's a number of not bad prizes to give away there. And the clues were Carl. Uh, first one was, uh, my younger brother spotted you the other day, the initials JS. We had, um, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. And, uh, third one, the vibrators. That's the, rubbish, that one. And the initial B. We'll Is give away the, uh, the prizes and the answers next. Um, yeah. what are we going to play a record or do, what we got coming up? We got Monkey News. Yeah, we got that. We got, uh, we've got loads, too numerous to mention at the moment. We've got any adverts. 
Got some of them. Oh, brilliant. Cram them in later. Excellent. Look forward to them. Joe Jackson. Good, good track. Good tune. Well, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> Different for girls. Joe Jackson on XFM 104.9. A retro cut. Um, bit of monkey news would be good, Carl, if you got that. Well, uh, we're, well we need, we're struggling here. We're struggling, Steve. Wait I, a minute. I, 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 you say that, but wait a minute. The answers for Rockbusters are coming up right now. <laughs> So, you thought people were turning oh, off? We got, oh, we've got, what have we done? We've done, take my shoes off for money. Take my shoes off for money. <laughs> we've done that. We've done, um, oh, look at these funny postcard breasts. <laughs> and, uh, we've done, we didn't win a Sony. Um, coming up, Regular monkey, features. Um, oh, jeez, we got, got nothing, have we? Come on. Sometimes it's good. Come on, Carl, save us. You've got to save so us. We've done. those answers now. We're doing them now, Steve. Yeah. Right. Uh, first one, my younger brother spotted you the other day. Yeah. The initials there, JS, that was junior senior. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. Second one, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. That was Alison's Moye. Alison's Moye. <laughs> Alison Moye. Sorry, just one. give us the clue again. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. So, Muhammad Ali's son. Yeah. Right, Alison's Moye. Yeah. Brilliant. And then third one, always a, an easy one in there for everyone to look and take part. Uh, the vibrators and the initials B, that's Buzzcox. <gasps> you can't say Cox. <laughs> that's why we did win the award. That's why you can't say Cox. Oh, have we got a winner? We have indeed. <laughs> um, I chose him because his name amused me. Um, which is a bit hard. Not Mr. Tits. <laughs> no, no, no. Gerald Preston. <laughs> Sorry, Gerald, I don't know why that tickled me. It's so unfair. It only tickled me because it's not funny. It's There's so nothing unfair. funny with Gerald Preston. There is nothing funny. <laughs> I think well, it was because it sounded like it was a man of a different generation. I think that was why Gerald I found it. Gerald Preston. It sounded like... <laughs> Right, Gerald, there's nothing funny about that name. There's nothing funny about the name, Gerald. Just, Steve just made me laugh. <laughs> he did. I don't know why that made us funny, made us laugh, but it just tickled me. Oh, but, but <laughs> Gerald, whatever you think of your name, don't worry, because these prizes there's including Fatboy Slim... There's nothing funny about Slim. Gerald Preston. I don't know, Gerald, if you're a fan of wild weather, <laughs> but you've got a 2 VH set <laughs> coming to your way. So you certainly will be interested in extreme weather conditions by the end of that, I would have thought. Plus oh, some arbitrary CDs, oh. so, um, good luck, Jerry. Oh, dear. Excellent. Um, right, brilliant. Good. That's that sorted. Right, let's have another tune and then maybe some monkey news. Yeah. Well, actually, now you've sort of mentioned a bit of monkey news, that I've found something in the week, right, that we've talked about in the past, right, that oh, I've got some other monkey stuff, but this is just... Oh, forget it. I... <laughs> what? Come on! What's the matter with you? Right, do you know that thing we did ages ago? What? When, uh, we were out one day and we were talking about monkeys in, in a room with a, with a PC. And if you leave them in there long enough... Yeah, eventually a, a, an infinite amount of monkeys, or one monkey in an infinite amount of time, will eventually type the complete word of Shakespeare, yeah. Right, we talked about that ages ago. Yeah. I said it wouldn't happen. No, it, it doesn't make sense. You can't say it wouldn't happen, it doesn't make sense. It's a, a mathematical conundrum. It doesn't anyway, make sense. Go on. Anyway. Right. They got a couple of monkeys. All right, so not an infinite amount, then. <laughs> okay, so, all right, but never mind. Yeah. Uh, got a couple of monkeys, put it in a room. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was a, if it was one PC or they got, got a job lot or whatever. Not an infinite amount, then. <laughs> and, uh, left them in there for a month. Oh, not an infinite amount of time, then, either. <laughs> okay. So two monkeys a month. Okay, go on. Yeah, I see the experiments no, working so far. About eight monkeys. Oh, eight <laughs> monkeys. Oh, let me just work that out as a, as a fraction of infinity. Oh, it's know. one, oh, on, infinity, eight. eight into infinity. Oh, God, uh, um, a month. And what happened then, Carl? <sighs> did, they they the did they type the complete watch of Shakespeare? I'm assuming they no, did. No, they, 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 uh, no, they only did a proportion of it. <laughs> okay, what they did just they did Macbeth. <laughs> What happened then, Carl? Please they, tell us. They didn't have anything. They didn't come up with anything. You're an idiot, Carl. Did... You really are an idiot. Play a record. That's ridiculous. Well, what did you expect? What did you expect? You a, bit, a, bit, a bit of Keats. And no, pastry no. of the Radio Times by one of them, the cleverest <laughs> one. No, but what they did say is they didn't even get, they didn't even write one word out. One... No. You don't... No. Infinity or nothing. That's the point. There's a big leap between any number you could think of and infinity. In fact, an infinite leap. Do you understand the concept of infinity? Don't rub your eyes. I, I, I lost him on do you. Yeah. Didn't I? Right, play a did record. Did they type any- did they type nothing from, like, any of the book- any of the Tarzan no, books? Nothing. <laughs> 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 but they never 
answer right there. I mean, that would be my favourite, surely. Uh, <laughs> I'm stunned. I can't believe they didn't even do, like, a transcript of Every Which Way But Loose. Yeah. I can't believe it. They must have chosen some really thick monkeys. They didn't type any of Charlton Heston's speeches from, <laughs> um, from Planet of the Apes. I can't believe it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You'd have thought six monkeys in a month would have done something. Yeah. At least a script for BJ and the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing, of course, would be doing the bear that it was a monkey, not a bear. Really? Stuck in a moment. You can't get out of it by you two. I know how they feel. Oh, just a quick thought. I just had a sudden thought. Um, just a little update on something we talked about ages ago on the show. You might remember I said once that, um, if I ever met Dido, I thought yeah. I had a good chance with her. Yeah, because yeah. Because she looks like the sort of woman that would work in, say, a photocopying shop. Yeah, And yeah. she'd probably be quite charmed by or me. Or a secretary so. that sort of, like, wrote a couple of songs. Exactly. And the boss said, put, I entered her in something. Yeah. And it, and it won. She did them at the Christmas party, everyone clapped. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, just an update on that. So far, nothing's happened. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't, I haven't met, met her. Nothing's going no, on, so okay. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that, Rick. I know you're interested. I, I, I imagine it's a foregone conclusion when you do, though. It's That's the beauty of it. It's, you know, when, when I hear you met her, you don't need to say any more. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just, just say, you, I'll let just you know. Just wink and say, I met Dido last night, and I'll yeah. go say no more. Exactly. You, don't, you don't need... <laughs> I'll just look a little bleary-eyed. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, and, uh, probably still wearing the same clothes. From the mace. Yeah, exactly. Um... Right. Anyway, I just thought I'd keep me abreast of that. Yeah. All the breasts from London. Carl. Come on, Carl. Cheer up. You've had, you had a good Carl. week. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to do a month's notice? <laughs> <laughs> little bit of friction. Little bit of friction between Steve and Carl. I think they're, uh, you know, they're getting to each other. Which is... Yeah. Which well, is tr he's underpants are pinching. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carl. Cheer up. You're lucky. You know how many people uh, would... would Pay good money to. Carl, you had a good night out this week. You went to the, the Sony's, you had a free meal. Yeah, that, that annoyed me. I don't. You know, we came away empty handed, just... but. Yeah. It was a go good on. night, wasn't it? You enjoyed that? Did you enjoy that? It... I ate it, but go on. I'm just finding more and more things are, are annoying me. Really? Like, even. Like, at that, at that Sony's night, right? You've got a lot of uh, respectable people going to that thing, you know, people yeah. who are high up at the BBC and that. Yeah. And. Just the way, you know, it's, it's a posh night, there's people there with dinner jackets on and stuff. Mm. And then I, I went to the toilet for a wee. Old fella in there. Mm. I thought, he looks, he looks like he's been in the, you know, the radio game for years, probably done loads of award-winning Sony stuff. Yeah. You know, I th all the BBC documentaries to do, in-depth stuff, and I thought, you know, I wonder if I'll be like him when I'm, when I'm older, I wonder if I'm as good as him. Thinking all that, he's having a wee in the next urinal. Farts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. He just farts. <laughs> <laughs> Old fella in a dinner jacket, probably hired. And I but thought is that, is that like they, they that. try to, they think, well, I better do it in here. And it's sort of like a trumpet. And uh, everyone everyone just goes, yeah, that's fine. What's up with that? You know, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Is it? It's just the arrogance of doing he, he it. He just did it. It, was, it sounded like a, a lost whale. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> and, and he didn't sort of go... And try and clinch it. It went. It carried on, and then he went. Oh, that was a good one. Really, old fella. Must have been about seventy. Oh dear. And well, better out than in. Yeah. But it's not though. I wasn't. I was. I wasn't brought up like that. You see. Right. Because I did it. I mean, I never really did it that much as a kid. Sure. And then I was at my mum and dad's. You never. Sorry, you never did it that much as a kid. What party? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not, not just like, you know, as a joke and that. We are taping this for next year's Sony Award, aren't we? We're taping this, what we're talking about now, aren't we? Mm. To hand in. Because this is, go on. But I was at, at my mum and dad's, right? And, uh, Suzanne was sat on the floor in front of me. And she was like, oh, rub me neck, it's hurting. So I thought, oh, and I hate doing that. It really do it bores me. Well, right? she's your girlfriend, for goodness sake. I know. Yeah. Dad went and different. You're getting paid for that. Go on. So I thought, the only way to shift her is I'll let one go, right? So I did that. <laughs> I love that. It's such a loving relationship. <laughs> That's great! Uh, so like doing the washing up badly. Yeah. She won't ask me again. What have you done? I've smashed the cups up <laughs> and I've written, written in excrement across the wall. <laughs> well, that's no good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I won't do it again then. Give me the marigolds, I'll do it. I've nailed the cat to the fridge. What's <laughs> up with that? Yeah. Go on. But yeah, so, so I did that and it worked. She sort of got up and said, oh. And my dad said, what, what do you do that for? Yeah. <gasps> what was he thinking? So I said, oh, I hate, I hate rubbing a neck. Does me head in. So he says, you know, I've never trumped. In front of your mother. <laughs> the 
40 years. <laughs> Sorry, where was this? Chigley? Why is this family talking like this? Um, never... Young Carl, I've never trumped in front of your mother in the 35 years. <laughs> why you'd... Why, what? I don't know what... No, it's just, it's just that he said, you know, we, we've done a lot of things in the family. Hold on, what, what did he say that for? What, he's never, he's never trumped in front of your mother. He just offered that information up. Well, he, he just was surprised that I did it. He said, where have you got that from? Yeah. Well, you, you, you lower intestines, I thought. What do you mean? You to imagine, imagine there's a class of farting. Oh, uh, no. we haven't, we haven't told our kids about farting. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't do it. We haven't told them about it. We haven't, no, we don't do it in front of them. <laughs> you have to learn it, do you? No, no, but there's a, there's a place. That's what I was always told. Go on. There's a place for that. Cornwall. <laughs> so, um, and, and my mum, you know, it's the same. She, she doesn't do it. Right. If she, if she goes to the toilet to, you know, do, do what you got to do. She, uh, she makes sure, like, she, she'll sort of say things like, are you going out for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> are you going uh, out for a walk? Does what? she think, that, does she know that you're broadcasting this? <laughs> well, yeah. She's probably around at the neighbours now, listening. Yeah. Any of you going out for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not at So all. she, what, she kind of, she waits until everyone's left, or? She, she doesn't like the thought that everyone, do you know, like, cats don't like you staring at them when they're doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I've never stared at a cat while he was doing anything. <laughs> Have you ever had a pet cat? What do you mean? Yeah, go on, go on. No, it's just that cats, uh, you know, if you get them a little litter tray. Yeah. I remember being told, like, now, <laughs> when it does use it, don't sort of go and look at it. <laughs> It, put, it puts it off. I was the same as a kid. I didn't, it, when I had a what nappy... You, who comes and looks at you when you're on the bar? No, no, when I was a kid and I was in a nappy, right, yeah. I used to always, um, like, th there was a corner in the kitchen that yeah. I'd always go to, and everyone would be Why like... Why did you go to the toilet? Because I had a nappy on. Oh, yeah, right, how old were you? 14th birthday? About, <laughs> about three or something. Yeah, right. And I used to always go to this corner, and yeah. everyone, everyone said, right, he's, he's going to the corner, don't watch, <laughs> don't stare at him. <laughs> Because you, you've got the same head. Yeah, you look like you, a baby. It's just the pain in his head. But with that, would you? Okay, would you put a nappy on for fifty quid? Now. Yeah. Just I'm just being just sitting. Just uh, do your work. Right. Oh, anyway. Just anyway, sit in the right? corner. <laughs> so I'm not, getting, I'm not doing that, right? Come on. So yeah, my mum's like that, and something else. She's she's good. I mean, people, go, go, people might know. At a dinner party, oh, it's Mrs. Pilkerson just in the corner. Just don't look at. Her. Yeah. <laughs> don't look at Mrs. P. She's just she's just in the corner of our kitchen. Don't just look away. <laughs> What's she doing? Just, just she's just doing her business. <laughs> she's there. She is. There she is squatting. Are you going for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. Carl. Another uh, another trick I've learned from her. Right, if uh, if you're using, say, a friend's toilet or something, yeah. and uh, you don't want to leave your mark, um, <laughs> just use go down the toilet and flush it. Use a uh, take a box of matches with you. Yes. What the curse? the curse calls it like Burn the place down. And have a <laughs> wonderful crap and just leave when the fire brigade get there. Oh, forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Who is it? It's fine. Yeah. It's a good one. We don't go brilliant, do you? <laughs> if you're gonna talk, you do say something useful. There you go. Vines yeah. there, homesick. <laughs> brilliant. Now, can't we you should do monkey news now, because I know you want to save it, but I think you should put your best stuff first. You never know what will happen, you know what I mean? Always put your best well, stuff out there. Let me just get it out of the, uh... Okay, well, oh. while he's getting it, can we have a jingle for monkey news? Yeah. Oh! What. Chimpanzee that! Monkey ears. <laughs> tell you what, right, about putting, uh, putting your best stuff first. Yeah. Right. Do you know, uh, do you know what we were saying the other, the other week about in Chinatown? Uh, not really out, a town. Well, it's not, it's not a town, right? And, like, <laughs> the restaurants, the young, they have, like... Oh, those old oh, dead ducks and chickens just hanging in the window, yeah. An octopus and all that, just yeah. hanging there. Yeah. And that doesn't, like, make you want to go in, does it? No, sure. This morning, walking through Soho on the way in, walked past this sort of strip joint place, this woman said, do you want to come in, sir? All right, turn round, she must have been about 80. <laughs> 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 so, you're equating her to a, yeah. a, a, a hangy bit of octopus. Well, <laughs> you, you say, are you performing? And a chicken. I'm just saying, again, put your best stuff at the front door. <laughs> 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 yeah, good thinking. Uh, all right, anyway. Better monkey news that's been uh, it's been sent in. Mm -hmm.
Right. Uh, Gareth, in Catford. Right. Good work, Gareth. Um, basically, it's about this, uh, this monkey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the jungle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's got a gig out in hairdressers. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? It's got, it's got, uh, it's got itself a nice little job going in the hairdressers. As what? It, um, gets people sitting down. Um, and what it does before the people have their hair cut, that, it sort of sits there. And it goes through people's hair, makes sure it's clean. And, uh, people are loving it. Right, people backtrack so, so it's a, so it's a pet monkey. It's nothing to do with it getting a gig in an hairdresser's. It's a pet monkey. It's not working at Monkey and Guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, seriously, it, it's, it's in there. Uh, I think it might have started off as a job and then- So what does it say? It says, Junior fifteen pounds, stylist thirty-five pounds, monkey <laughs> sixty-three pounds. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite dry. follow- It's in the jungle. It was wandering about. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe- maybe it did But it looks good, its hair looks good, someone thought, hang yeah, on. Yeah, but never ever- you see, people make that mistake with hairdressers anyway. I always say, well, if the hairdresser's got a good haircut, go to where he's going. Right. Right? Because yeah. that's what I thought when I read it, about having yeah. a good haircut. How right. often do you go to the hairdressers? Well, not that much anymore, sure. but, but I used to always think that. Yeah. You uh, used to go to a bloke who told me had his shack on a railway bridge that used to shake when a train went over. Yeah. Because it was two quid. Yeah, but before that, I've, I've never had that much luck with hairdressers. Before that was a, was another place, and it was run by sort of, you know, these sort of wannabe gangster type people. Oh, yeah. But they'd, uh, you know, you'd go in what for What do you mean by wannabe gangsters? Well, sort of just, just petty crime stuff. You'd go in for air cut and then you'd walk out with a video recorder. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You'd you don't say, have to take it. <laughs> no, no, but they'd sort of spend ages flogging you that whilst cutting your hair. It was their thing. It's like, right, sit down, you're right. Yeah. Oh, you so know. So, for the weekend? What are you thinking of? Maybe a Sony. Yeah. yeah. So, and, so that, that's when I stopped going there because it was like, this is what I haircut. I don't want to be asshole. It was one said that you had the hair of a Chinaman. It's a fellow who works in a railway station haircut. <laughs> well, he saloon. should know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's been around a bit clearly if he runs a shack <laughs> next to a railway station. <laughs> so, um. Can we just go back to Monkey News yeah, for a second? So anyway, that's all, yeah. I yeah. didn't quite follow why he, he, he's still, he's still, his, his salon is in the jungle? Or where is it? No, he, he was doing his, doing what he does in the jungle, right? Right. Um, <laughs> he's walking about. He wanders into the hairdressers. Yeah. Maybe they didn't have him on, like, as a job straight away. He was just there. He's just said, this is yeah. nice. He's sat there picking the nits and Oh, I, oh, Carl, I don't know where to start. Then. It's just, the, it's the, it's the embellishment. You don't walk in, he walks from a jungle to an hairdresser's. I mean, you're an idiot. You really are an idiot. I'd love to see you try and get a job in an hairdresser if there was another <laughs> monkey up for it. You'd never get a job. So he was good at that. People said, this is relaxing. Apparently he had really nice hands, soothing. Yes. Right, on people's heads. He said, let's put him on the payroll. So let's put him on the payroll? What do you mean? No, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay, this is the news item, is it? <sighs> Customers are queuing up to have their hair done at a salon in the jungle by a monkey. Mm -hmm. Judy, a pigtailed macaque, has a reputation as the best exterminator of head lice in Com Kane. She is so good, some customers fall asleep under her gentle touch. Yeah. Regular Amporon Chekema said, Judy's hands are so soft and gentle, I really feel I can relax. But you know that is doing what it does naturally. It's looking for, like, salt and stuff in the hair. Yeah. And nits. It's not on the payroll. It doesn't complain about when it gets, when it gets <laughs> deducted at uh, national insurance. It's not part of the union. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. but, but a good monkey news, you know, yeah. backed up with, uh, with good tabloid <laughs> with journalism. With so, yeah, with solid yeah. evidence there. So. Now that's, I think we maybe should start marking the monkey news, Rick. I don't know what you think, giving it marks out of ten, maybe. Uh, for both interest and validity. Well, for interest, I'll give it seven. For Carl's, uh, Carl believing that there was something to this monkey thinking it had a job and getting yeah. paid. But it was also <laughs> doing kind of perms. Two. And colouring. Two. Yeah. Ridiculous. Again. Yeah. Ridiculous. More monkey news next week. Hopefully let's just hear that jingle again. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Peace train. Isn't that brilliant? Cat Stevens. Now, well, I've, I've sort of enjoyed the last sort of, you know, hour or so after, after the disappointment of the Sonys. Um, I, th I think we are going to give up, to be honest. Um, do another week and then shoot off. Yeah, knock it on the head. Okay. We are doing it for a laugh anyway. But, if they're not going to reward us for that, then do you know what I mean? it's not really worth it. But I, I, I tell you what could, but 
What about this? Carl, can you find out who was on the panel? Can you? But what difference does it make? Well, I want I want you to interview. I want you to phone them up and and I want them to tell them why, why um they didn't think our show was. Yeah, let them explain themselves. Just explain themselves. They've got to stand by the convictions. Find them all. Track them down. There's probably about yeah, three. But what do you expect? Then? I They're want to tell the truth. No, want... you're right. The monk and you should have you know <laughs> done the job for you. I just want people. I don't want to be. I don't want to sit in a room and hide. I want the three people on the, on the panel. I'll find them out to say we didn't vote for you because we thought. It was shoddy, amateurish, annoying, there was too much swearing. I go, fair enough, well done, mate. You. We didn't vote for you because Carl's voice is an irritant, okay? Okay, well done, mate, you're all right. Uh, we didn't vote for you because, uh, Gervais, you're a, a fat, useless git who understands nothing about broadcasting. And, and you might do something. <laughs> yeah, and I go, right, I'm not so happy with that, but at least you told the truth. Mm -hmm. But... Get them on the phone. Find out. Find out from Andrew. I get noticed the, none get... of them have mentioned me, which is good. I they know, yeah. They're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They probably all love Steve. Mm. No one likes to pick on an invalid. Well, do you know what I mean? That's... I'm just... We, um, we got a player request here for, um, what's her name, who's... I don't believe it's he. Uh, Sonia, who's 18 today. We couldn't find William. It was really nothing worth Smith because, um, whoever is in charge of the library, uh, I mean, they probably won an award for it, but, you know, she didn't ask for four non-blondes, so I found there is a light by the Smiths. So, a week to go. Blur and out of time. They're joking, there's two hours to go. <laughs> On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. A new leaf, um, bit of a blow at the, uh... Sony's, um, not like that. I mean, you know, we were taken aback. <laughs> Speak for <A> yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, we've got guests. Jonathan Ross won and he has guests, so we're gonna have guests in. Uh, one of which is, uh, sort of a tie-in. He's gonna explain himself. It's, uh, Dr. Fox, Dr. Neil Fox. Popped in for a chat. It's a pre-record, we've got that. Although live, in the second hour, we're gonna have a chat to the girls from Tattoo, who are, uh, upstairs at the moment in Capital, and they're gonna, they're gonna pop down and have a little chat with us. So we're really trying to, you know, make this more of an interactive show. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we don't know yet whether we're gonna give up, uh, or not. It depends how this show goes. Um, yeah, look forward to that. But we've got some great, we went down to the big library, so we don't have to rely on four non-blondes and the, uh, you know, the two jam tracks that are up here. We went down to the big library. And, uh, we've got some great tracks, Steve, haven't we? That's we've got some true. classics. Should we play one now? Well, before that, I just remember that some of the criticism we received, uh, I think, was that we're perhaps not taking into consideration the listeners. A lot of shows, a lot of radio shows, they cater very much to the community, to the area which they're broadcasting, mm, they interact yeah. with the, uh, with the Where's listenership. Where's the fun in that? Oh, I, I mean, agree. Well, for me, really. Um, I, I, I'd just like to justify why we don't tend to um, correspond or interact with the listeners. Here's an, a typical email from Vicky, age 25. She asks, do you ski? Rick, that's her question. <laughs> no, I do don't. you ski, yes or no? <laughs> no, I don't. No, you don't. Right, I there don't. you are. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Keep those coming in. <laughs> See, he's, now he's turned him against us, Carl. What do you think, Carl? What do you think of Steve's attitude there? It's all right. <laughs> More insight like that coming later. <laughs> Black Grape, Cut His Heroes, next FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington, okay? Proper, proper radio. As you know, we're a bit gutted that we won nothing at the Sony Awards. We found out that, uh, on the panel was, uh, Dr. Fox, probably one of the, the greatest, um, DJs in the world. One of the great I, living broadcasters. I, I... I certainly think that he's, he's up there, yeah. um, with, uh, with Tarrant, John O'Coleman. Um, and so... And we, Chris we Moles. Are, uh, Chris, Chris Moles. We asked him to... He's also on the, uh, pop, you know, pop idol panel, so he, he can he make and break somewhere. people. So, yeah. we asked him, basically, to explain himself, why did we win nothing? Why were we so bad? This is what he had to say. The award, guys, was called the Entertainment Award. Right now, in itself, I think that should probably tell you something about what should be on the tape. There should be some entertainment, and uh, it just wasn't very entertaining, actually. I don't mean that sounds quite horrible sitting here in front of you now, but it it just wasn't very entertaining. But fundamentally, what what elements did you not find entertaining? 
uh, the fact that it didn't seem to entertain me at all uh -huh. as part of it. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a, like, how long's a piece of string, isn't it? What is entertaining? Well, we have talked about string on the show before, though. Uh, and then there were loads of people I'd never heard of in my life, and some of those were perhaps a bit more entertaining than you. The people that got, got silver, I think they were called Joe and Twiggy. They worked for a station in the Midlands, uh, I think Train FM. They were actually pretty funny. Funnier than ours. Stuff. Yeah, what? Yeah, they were actually. Yeah, they were funny, and they seem to they seem to sort of understand their local. They seem to understand their market a bit more. Yeah. And then I got onto yours. I think, oh, great, Ricky, his face. Yeah, he's really funny in that program, isn't he? I must watch that. I'm going to absolutely die laughing here. And uh, oh God, it was painful. How would you have improved it? Just listening. <sighs> Bit of humour, be quite right. good. Bit of humour, essential. I would think to an entertainment show. Um, a bit of prep, you know, a bit right. of, so get in there and actually think about what it's going to do, perhaps. Well, right, right, okay. Um, well, thank you, uh, Doctor Fox, for your honesty. We've got to the bottom. Wh while you're here, can I just show you this? Uh, that lump. Do you still do prescriptions? Doctor well, Fox, though. He was, you know, he was honest. He was blunt. He was blunt, you know, he, you know, that's... I'd like that's a second opinion. I really do. He's not actually <laughs> a doctor. <laughs> um, in fact, he, well, he used to be called Dr. Fox, and now he just calls himself Neil Fox. I think he's been struck off. No, he's Neil Fox, MD. <laughs> right. He's just, I yeah. wondered if there was some malpractice that something They're, happened. I mean, we Someone can't... was under, and he sort of, you know, <laughs> went a little bit crazy. <laughs> Let's leave it there! <laughs> yeah. Because Froggy will not take that lightly. Who? Froggy. What do you mean Froggy? He's Dr. Frog now, he's changed it to <laughs> Fox. Right, right, he hated Fox. But uh, are we going to heed his, his criticism? Because it was about, there was no preparation, yeah. we weren't funny, fair enough. Yeah. Um, there was just really no content we in didn't the show. Care about we our, didn't care about the show. The demographic we were meant to be aiming at. Um, 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 just sounds like a lot of work, all that. Uh, well, I, I think what we can do is we, we can take it all on board and immediately forget it and <laughs> carry on, because it's easier. What about that? Brilliant. I'll tell you what we could do, though. Play some bloody great tunes. <laughs> Thanks very much. Athlete. You got the style on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, and it. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Well, you know the funny thing was the uh, the day of the Sonys, the Rajar figures came out. That's the body that tells exactly how many listeners you've got, etc. And uh, um, XFM went down a little bit across the board, except one show, Steve, that went up 34 percent. Keep talking. Well, what show do you think that was? Well, I'm trying to think. Would it be Zoe Ball? No. no. Would it be Christian Connell Breakfast Show? No. no. It was this little mother <laughs> of a show. Really? Up yeah. 34%. Yeah. Everything else went down. We went up 34%. Yeah. So maybe Dr. Fox should be listening to those figures. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Will we get a pay rise? Will we get a 34% pay rise, Carl? Ooh. Up to 80 quid a month. <laughs> yeah. No, because uh, for, for the last, like, two years, there's been nothing there. And you've still been getting the same money, haven't you? That's the way it works. There's been what, though? It's, you're not paid per listener, are you? It's just... You, you know what I mean? <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've, <laughs> they've each given us five pence. <laughs> exactly. Um, I went along to, uh, I came in from the presenters' meetings this uh, I've never been oh, before. A presenters' meeting, I didn't know they existed. And I just came in to annoy Carl, it was about five to six, um, so I was gonna get him as he knocked off, we're gonna have a Sorry, time. and the presenters' meeting is what, that's where they dish out which amusing news stories they're gonna read out, is it? Yeah, or they, no, no, what order they're gonna play, um, uh, athlete cold play, right. uh, the vines. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, I went upstairs, all the people were there, and, um, quite interesting, wasn't it? Carl. Yeah. You know why the figures went down a little bit? Go on. The war. Is that what they said? The war, yeah. Uh, at one, <laughs> one point, I said to Carl, just how many listeners died in this war then? Because <laughs> I thought he was saying that they were, they were at the front. Yeah. All the, the XLM listeners went, well, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to Iraq. Well, the reason our listeners Tell went... Tell Zoe to tape it for me! <laughs> The reason our listener show went up is that, that just tells you who's listening to us. Cowards, <laughs> yeah. yellow bellies, children, <laughs> women. People with fallen arches. Yeah. Terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, it was quite a good meeting. Now I'd sort of... So what exactly, is there anything I missed out on? Is no, no, they just, you know, it, it went, it went down a little bit, except our show, which went up 34%. Up 34%, but yeah. no awards Remember for that. that. And then you went all, uh, out, you went out afterwards, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we went to, uh, went to a bar to have a couple of drinks and that. Yeah. And then, uh, a few of them went on to, uh, on to string fellas. No, they didn't. Well, some of them did. Zoe Who? did. Zoe and, a f you know, a few of the office people and that. String I, I went fellas? Out. Yeah. To, to what? To watch lap dancing? To beat, what? Yeah, that's, that's what goes on there, isn't it? I know, it's mad, isn't it? Have you- I've never been to Stringfellows, I don't know what happened. Uh, 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 but, no. Uh, 
wh- why, why would they... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I was talking to people about it the day after, and they said, oh, you missed out. I said, well, did I? I said, well, how does it work? They said, well, you know, you pay... Never quite understood lap dancing. Never quite understood it. Well, it's, it's basically someone dancing naked rubbing their arse in your face. Yeah. That's basically the gist of it, is it? But you, but you can't... The rules is you can't talk. Do they do a, um, a home service? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's just, it's nearly, I, I'm, I've got to be careful what I say here, but it, it's sort of, you know, I'm not I'm dissing string fellows or anything, but is that not sort of like one step down from prostitution? That's such someone... an antiquated, what, no, is it from I mean? the 19th century? <laughs> no, but I mean, what, what, it's like, it's, what, I, I don't, I don't quite understand it. I, 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 did, have you, have, did... I don't get it, I don't get it. Because the thing is, the, the, I said, how does it work? They said, uh, you pay 20 quid, <laughs> you, get, you get some clean money, sort of, like, little vouchers that you stick in the knickers or whatever. Oh, God. Clean money? Yeah. Disinfected money. Okay. Well, just, like, vouchers. Can you put loose change in there? Because <laughs> I got a lot of that. But, um... I owe you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah go on. 20 quid it is. Right. And, um... I, I just don't get it, cos, I mean, I'm not, I'm not tight with money or anything, but... No. You pay your 20 quid, they dance in front of you, but you're not allowed to touch, which to me is like going to a restaurant, ordering a nice big warm dinner, and they put it in front of you, and it's like, well, you can't eat it, and you're saying, but well, it's going cold. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of some bloke sitting in Stringfellows, businessman, <laughs> right, he's paid 20 pounds, there's an arse waving his face, and he's going... Can I not just... They go, don't. So he goes, it's going cold! <laughs> Look at it! It's going cold! <laughs> oh, oh, that is brilliant. It's oh. going cold. That is... I, I mean, see, Carl in the week was saying that he doesn't like sayings and phrases and metaphor and analogy, and I was going, you know, and, and, and he thinks it's sort of like, you know, one step away from poetry. But he comes out with the most evocative phrases. Mm. That, that, that is a straightforward... Analogy. Lap dancing is like being given a meal that you can't eat. See, that's 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 great. Mm. That's how you saw it, and that, that that that's so much better than saying it's it's mad you can't touch or it's a waste or. Do you see what I mean? I was I was trying we were trying to inflame his um, enthusiasm in the week, and uh, I said about um, different phrases, and he goes, "Well, why not just say the actual words?" I was going, "Well, it's more poetic," and I told him the uh, Isaac Newton one. Um, uh, if I have seen further than any other man, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. And I said, well, that's because, you know, he's saying, um, uh, you know, I'm getting lauded for being this great scientist and all these discoveries and being a genius, but I'm saying, you know, if it wasn't for those scholars before me that had come up with what they come up with, you know, I wouldn't have got this far. Carl went, what did he say? I just said, well, I, I prefer him to give me a name check. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? If he stood there and he's saying how good everything is, don't just class me, don't, like, don't sort of put me in with a load of other people. Give me a mention. If you were one of the other scholars? Yeah. Yeah, I think there were probably people that died sort of years before him. I think he's saying more that he's thanking the body of work yeah. these scientists and these great men had, had handed down, you yeah. know, through either books, material, teachings. He's not that, giving yeah. a big shout out to the collective science posse. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, thank you. Actually, I copied Nigel's. <laughs> yeah. He's not saying that. I, I was, I was like, earwigging. I heard what Nigel said about it, about the third law. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I look into sayings and stuff Go a lot on. more and see if they work. Well, one, one that, um, happened a couple of weeks ago, right? You were talking about the, uh, you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it. Is yeah. What you said? Well, I never understood that, because I thought, well, what's the point of having your cake and not eating it, rather like your lap dancing analogy? But it actually means you can't have eaten your cake and still have it there, yes, obviously. Exactly. Well, the, the time that I saw that same work, right, I was, I was in Asda with Suzanne. Yeah. And do you know those big binders you get with nice cakes in them? Yeah. For birthdays and that, you can get one with, like, David Beckham on the front of it. Yeah. You can have one with, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine, if you R want. Ricky Gervais. Yeah. yeah. You can have one of them. And I saw one of those comedy ones where it is, like, a big pair of breasts. Yeah. And that is when, you know, you can have your cake and eat tit. <laughs> play record. No, but you see play what I'm saying? Play record, play record. I want to talk to you about it. About puns. Just... Placebo. This picture with the androgynous vocal talents at the helm there of 
Brian Maloco <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Informed Javanis. broadcasting. Yeah. Excellent. Did you see, I think, I'm sure, I don't know if Carl saw it, I know you watched it, Rick. The, uh, it was extraordinary, it was a Sky One TV show the other night. It was something like, uh, um, uh, reality TV. Oh, yeah, I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. Excellent. And it was about basically what, the fortunes I of various- I cannot get enough of it. The fortunes of various reality TV stars, uh, since they've come out of the show. Christine Hamilton out, coming out of the jungle. And obviously, once again, always a pleasure to find out what Fats Waller is up to, Rick Waller. I mean, oh, he's in the band now. He's got his own band. He was playing in some club in Rochester. There was about it's sort of gospel, people in the sort of gospel rock, that sort of soul gospel rock thing, like something you see in the in, in the commitments or something. And uh, and the when leather. it cut to the audience, it was like it was in Butlins. It was just a big dance floor, and there was just people like, watching indifferently. And he went, the people that were here <laughs> loved <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit and sad. And I have to say, oh, I the size of the man, his leather jacket, Carl, was extraordinary. I don't know how many animals had to die to make it. It was like, you know, it was It looked like, if he'd have fallen off, it'd been like the Hindenburg. Yeah. Because, It was like uh, a Zeppelin. Oh, the was... humanity! It's it was people. <laughs> it, I still think, when I see him wearing a kill like that, it looks like he is stood on the shoulders of two other people. Um, it's yeah. just a joke. Just a it's just like a circus act or something. <laughs> yeah. Because his head doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. It looks like it's one of those things that you steam yourself in. <laughs> exactly. it? You put your yeah. head out like that. It's, it's, yeah. Is that a machine you're in? No, it's a or coat. one of those old fashioned iron lungs. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, there were some magic moments. But there was a great, because once again, I mean, I missed a lot of, um, the, the first series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, but Brilliant. it showed once again, uh, the moment with Darren Day. Darren Day, a lovely guy, but that moment where he went off and sat on a rock I'm, and came back and he'd written a song. I know. Which he just, and I can't, it was also, it was sorts of things like, I'm in a hotel room in another town. I know, don't, okay, don't. And do it, it was just, it was like something you'd write when you were 14. It was unbelievable. When they showed it again, it's just stunning. I, I love songs you write when you're 14. It's like your first sort of like song where you could, you know, you know three chords. And it's always, <laughs> it's always stuff like, there's a man, he's a lonely man. Take a look at him, he looks a bit like me. <laughs> yeah. It is me. <laughs> it's that sort of thing like, we want to play it with someone and they, you want them to go, my god, you're deep. <laughs> yeah. My God, you're brilliant, aren't you? And that's about you, is it? No, oh, yeah, it is, yeah. I, I have to say, this is such a terrible confession. When I was doing a school play once, God. when I was about that age, 15, <sighs> right, there was a girl, uh, who was in the cast with me, yeah. right, and she sort of, you know, she was giving me the eye. I was thinking, yeah. Well, she, I kind of thought she was, right? And there was, <laughs> it was class. <laughs> but there was another guy, there was another guy there as well, I was sort of competing for affection. Oh, no. And uh, he was quite a witty guy. His name was pretty. Scott Hansen. He yeah. had long blonde hair. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I thought, well, the way to impress her, because I was 15 or whatever, I thought I was pretty smart. I sat in one of the adjoining dressing rooms, reading a copy of the, um, philosophical, uh, book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I didn't understand, but we actually sat there reading it in the hope that she would walk in and think, my God, you're he, reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And you don't go with the crowd. You don't want to come next door where we're talking about nonsense and people yeah, are flirting. We're talking about the bangles yeah, and yeah. curly whirlies. You're in here saying, look, just, if you want to come and talk to me, you're welcome, but I'm not, I, I'm you, a thinker. I thought you thought you were Kwai Chang Kane, didn't I, you? I thought it yeah. was like she'd think, Jesus Christ, I know, I've never met anyone like him. That is genius. And she, she, I remember what, the one time she accidentally walked in, she went, oh, oh, sorry, wrong room, and left again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> sorry, at 15, so this is about the time you took to wearing a bow tie to I'm impress people. I'm wearing a bow tie. I love yeah. that. No, I, I used to watch a lot of Harold Lloyd films. <laughs> And, uh, he always seemed to do good very well. I love it, I love the idea of a 15, you going, well, it's time I went to wooing. Right. <laughs> right, on yeah. with the bow tie, where's the zen? <laughs> um, where's the pipe and my bow tie? <laughs> it's a time I got me a bow. Yeah, yeah. I love that. But uh, songs are great as well. The other, the other thing you do, sort of when you're about 15, 16, is start writing songs about, like, the world's trying to take a piece of me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you think I'm going down? I'm coming back. I'm against the ropes. Yeah. They're trying to drag me down. It's like, you want to be cool, Han Lu. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They put me in this emotional prison. The man's on my back. Who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who, who they? Who? They try and take a piece of me. Who, who? <laughs> yeah. Who do? Wow. Well, You're you know, 14. Parents and that, don't they? You're incomprehensive. The teachers. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely love it. I still remember a poem. I like to say his name. We're, we're about 14, 15. And, uh, this, we had to write a poem. And, uh, obviously, everyone's was, um, pretty rubbish. But we, m mercilessly took the piss out of this bloke because I still remember the poem and th th how he did it is he went through a dictionary and found things with that and I, this is, this is a poem, right, okay, remember? I've remembered this for 
That's twenty-five years, right? The reason why, the reason why, the reason why I had to die. Did I bleed the blood of greed? What was my destiny? <laughs> And when we hear this, we were laughing. I mean, for a, a year, we would go, uh, what was my destiny? <laughs> it, it was just great. Can I hear it again? I enjoyed The that. reason why, the reason why, the reason why I had to die. Did I bleed the blood of greed? What was my destiny? <laughs> oh, oh. That's uh, almost as catchy as monkey news. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, I've got some monkey news for you. Let's play a record and come back and I've got some great monkey news for you, Carl. That's from the REM album that people tend to forget about now because it was so kind of poppy and such a massive hit out of time, but there are some good tunes on it. And there's one of them, Near Wild Heaven. Excellent, on XFM 104.9. Carl. Cool. Watching a programme yesterday, uh, and it was about these Japanese snow monkeys. And it was all about how animals learn things that aren't insti instinctive, particularly sort of primates, because they see other people doing it, and they start a culture. And they can pinpoint when these monkeys, when one monkey first went down and got in the hot water springs and stayed there because it was hot, and the others copied them, and now it's a, it's part of a, almost a culture, you know, that, that won't be handed on because it's not instinctive, but has to be learnt each time, and uh, you know, and uh, they um, they groom as normal like other monkeys, right? But they're they're really intelligent, and um, obviously the reason they groom other people, other other monkeys, is because they eat the mites. But the, also, the monkeys have learnt they like being groomed, okay? So they showed this one monkey, it went to a deer, okay, and it was grooming this deer to get its mite off it, right? But then it didn't eat it, it held it in its hand, it went over to a monkey, put the mite on itself to show the monkey it had a mite, and got a free grooming. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. That is extraordinary. Because it gave up the food, Knowing that if you put one there, this monkey would look for mites on it, yeah. and it would get a free grooming, and it was like having a little massage. What do you think of that? It's not bad. I've got some better stuff coming up later. <laughs> <laughs> on but monkey news, yeah. on the official. Yeah, monkey do, news. do you see that? Just see what. Do you see what? Mine though. Mine's true. I mean, that's an interesting and extraordinary. It actually happens. It's social behaviour amongst primates. I saw, I saw it. I saw it. It was. You know. Did it rob a bank, Rick, at any time? It didn't rob a bank, and it didn't open a hairdresser's. <laughs> See, that's well, what you're letting me- that's what you're letting yourself it's down. Not, it's not quite good enough, is it, my monkey news? No, I've got some- See the difference where I, I, I named the species, explained it slightly, told you an interesting fact, mm. as opposed to, there's this monkey, right? And, uh, Look at him looking at you. Yeah, he's it's not interested in it. <laughs> can I tell you now, can I try and describe for people the face that Carl has? I'll tell you what it's like, it's like if you draw, um, some eyes, a nose and a mouth on a balloon and then inflate it to about half full. That's what Carl's face looks like. That's what his head looks like. He looks like a face you've drawn on a balloon. Very small, the rest of the head huge. It's, it's just that today I'm a, I'm a bit tired, right? Mm. That's one thing. Why are you a bit tired? I just haven't been sleeping, right? Why not? I don't know. I've got a lot going on in the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if this would be like The Simpsons, if we could actually look in there, there would be two monkeys grooming yeah. now. Uh, Plus, you've, you've been talking about, like, stuff that I can't relate to and that, so I'm- What, um, writing poetry? Like what? Reading books. You know, what? doing poetry and stuff. I never did any of that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? At, well, at school they didn't- they didn't bother. They tried to get us to write more, <laughs> right? Right. By, uh... Giving you a pen? Well, they, they used to give us these school diaries. Yeah. Little, little red book. <laughs> and it was a way that they kept an eye on what you were doing out of school hours. Right. right so some kids would write down, you know... <laughs> Stole a bike. Yeah, Burn the house down. Yeah. But when I was at school, around that sort of twelve age, I, I didn't get up to much. You have no money, there's nothing you can do. So every night it was the same thing. I'd get home and you, I'd have to, I'd have to go to the shop, right? And get some potatoes and some bread every mm -hmm. night, right? And I kept taking this into school. Sorry, wh what was it? Dublin in the 17th century? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean every day you went to the shops and got potatoes and bread? <laughs> that's that's kind of what I had to get all the time. That's, <laughs> what, that's what we why? What did you have? Chip sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. Right, so uh, you went to the yeah you went there. So I kept with I kept your hoop and that, stick. I kept, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I kept putting that in a diary, you know, every night saying, <laughs> went, to, went to you phase. That was the name of the shop. Yeah. <laughs> what is it called? You phase. What is it, you or you? Like H U G H phase. H U G H, yeah. Oh, that was his name. You phase, right? right. Used yeah. to go there. 
get the potatoes and bread, bread and that. I what, have to find someone who's named a shop after themselves. <laughs> I'm not going to say what we sell. It's named after me or nothing, or I'm not opening. <laughs> Mainly potatoes and bread. Oh, yeah. White sliced loaves, King Edwards. And the teacher used to always say, just write something different in there. Make something up. Because yeah. like you know, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through to Friday, every <laughs> night it was just. Went to you phase. Yeah. <laughs> Went to, to you phase. So you sort of, you, you Are you sure, sure it wasn't an advert? Sure it wasn't paying you to say, uh, get my name in the book? <laughs> yeah. The only, t the only time that it changed and she said, oh, that's, that's made it a bit more interesting, was when it was my birthday and I had to buy a cake. Potatoes and a cake. And she said, oh, that's good. Yeah. That was my 13th birthday. My mum said, I got on from school, she said, oh, you're 13 today. Teenager, big, big turnover. Go and get a cake. That's your experience of writing? No, what, well, no, that's of, your yeah, experience that's... of your 13th birthday. Oh, by the way, you're 13 today, go and get a cake. Yeah. Brilliant. Big surprise? Was yeah. it a big surprise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is brilliant. So I love it. That's that... the only sort of writing. Well, yeah. and they never asked you to write essays or stories? Did anything? you never write a story or a poem or a... The stories I did earlier on were, you know, you, you made them up, but it was that thing that I'd, I'd always end them with, <laughs> and an alarm went off and it was all a dream. Every single one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they didn't, they didn't, I mean, it was a bit of a... <laughs> I, bought also, I bought some potatoes and some <laughs> yeah. bread, then I woke up and it was all the dream. <laughs> then I went to Chance and bought some potatoes and yeah. bread. But did, did you ever do anything that write about an adventure when you were a spaceman or you were in, you know, you were uh, a cowboy or... No? Yeah. All the teachers, like, had scams going on, so, like, <laughs> in English, right, <laughs> you'd go in there and the teacher would say, right, what we're doing today is... Got a load of brochures from Thompson, but they say like 1983 on the front. So I've got a load of stickers here that say 1984. Let's see how many you can do in half an hour. You are joking. Did you go and to school with Oliver Twist? <laughs> Sorry, you are joking. I'm not, that's what they did. So the teacher must have been getting like a freebie or something for helping them out. You, is this. Honest, honestly, yeah, that's what it's That like. is fantastic. They were all after it. They all, all <laughs> they were all other than Mr. Fagan, you had... Yeah. And then when they saw Karate Kid, they had the, every kid washing their car going, wax on, wax off, hurry yeah. up. Yeah. I'm, teach I'm teaching you something. Wax on, wax off, paint the fence. So I'm just saying, you know, that's, that's why I'm a bit quiet, because you're talking about stuff I can't... Can't relate to. And why, and why didn't you sleep last night? I'm just... I, I haven't slept well for... for since I was about 12. <laughs> Do you sleep well, Steve? <laughs> well, wait, 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 you can't let that go! I haven't slept well since I was 12. What, what do, do you know, mean? Do you know, like, a proper... I used to love going to bed as, as like, a kid. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, oh, am I going to sleep tonight? And I'm, I sort of wake up about four times. Right. Whereas when you're a kid, I remember really loving, like, going to bed. I'd, I'd, what, there was one time where I actually laughed myself to sleep. <laughs> Because I couldn't believe me luck. Is <laughs> <laughs> so wrong with him? What do you mean you, <laughs> do you laugh know, yourself? I've never had it when you're, when you're really tired and you get in bed and the pillars feel Yeah, it's stiff, all cold, yeah. And, and it's like, I can't believe this. Yeah. And I, I, it happened twice. Once when I just went to bed and I was really looking forward to it. <laughs> and also when I, I helped my dad out once, like, through the night. He worked at, like, at this paper company, right? And, uh, <laughs> I helped him out and I got in at about four in the morning with him. Got in bed. And I just was like, I, had, I, I was laughing my head off. I had to put the pillow over my head because I, I couldn't believe me luck. Like, I, I was like, oh, this is great, this. I'm going to sleep. I, I just have to say, life up north is so extraordinary. No, but you must be the easiest kid in the world to please. No wonder she knew she could just go get a cake. It's sort of like, it, what, what was he expecting me to say? He was expecting an extra hour in bed, <laughs> but we got him cake as well. <laughs> go I to bed love without that. any supper. Brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. It, in your just, own it, bed. How long was it before you got your? What did you used to do before? Just some straw in the corner. No, it's just that that thing of when you're really tired and. And do you ever do this with Suzanne then? Do you ever laugh yourself to sleep with her? <sighs> no, that's what I she mean. She can't sleep because you're chuckling away. I'm just. I don't know what's up with me. I've got a lot going on. <laughs> what, what? What do you mean you've got a lot I going don't know. on? I don't know. I was talking to the security bloke before, saying, "Do you sleep? <laughs> Have you got much going on in your head and stuff?" And I don't know. No, he wasn't insulted by that. I'm sure. Going up to someone and going, have you got a lot going on in your head? That uh, is brilliant. It I worries mean, me. It's interesting that um, your lack of sleep coincides with the diaries and the uh, the writing of the bread and potato story every day. I don't know if once you had that responsibility. Why don't you every night go to Hugh Faye's? 
get some bread and potatoes, you don't have to eat them, then go to bed and I think you'll be chuckling yourself to sleep. <laughs> 4.9. I'm Ricky Gervais and with me arguing like nutters are <laughs> Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Okay. All right? Calm down. Right. Right, let's just chill. Let's okay. just chill. Yeah, right. D what did you do last night, Rick? Uh, I watched I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I tried last week, I knew Tufnell was gonna come through. Mm. I knew he was. I went went to put a bet on and it was eleven to four and I thought, well, oh, that's not worth it. I could put on four hundred quid and I reckon I'd have won eleven hundred because I reckon he's gonna win. Yeah. So, uh, that is annoying. I suppose if you could go back in time, you'd probably change things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'd do? If I could go back in time, I'd go back in time and stop Hitler from being born. <laughs> <laughs> but then it might be worse because someone else might have come along and he'd been even better. It's like a novel. <laughs> yeah, you're like right. Ben Alton would write a novel yeah. like that or something, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, our things would be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, popped to the cinema last night and it was a joy of an experience because for What'd the first time I wanted to see X-Men 2. I, I want to see that. Yeah, really I saw one. I, I didn't, I don't like that sort of thing. I've never been a comic book, never been a, um, a geek like yourself. Not yourself, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. but I mean, you're not a geek in that. In that sense, a different. I mean, well, the traditional sense. No, 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 no. I'm, no. Well, I'm one of those sexier geeks. Like yeah, modern sexy geeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and two's meant to be even better. Isn't it? I really enjoyed it. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's good fun. But uh, the, but more so than the film was the fact that the actual cinema experience for the first time in a long time I actually enjoyed it because I just I had sleep. such a problem with the cinema. Well, I, I can't go. I have to wait about three weeks to dies down and go in the afternoon. I can't be sat next to people. I I don't know why people go to the cinema to eat. Ha have some before you go in there. Yeah. Rattling, crunching. What? Why? Why is this experience? This this film has cost fifty million pounds. Mm. It's meant to be an emotional, artistic experience. It's not meant to be something that's on while you're chowing down. Yeah. I don't know. Then, but people leave their mobile on. I want when someone answers, you go. I can't talk now. I, mean, I want to go. Don't you smack them on their face with it? Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I, uh, I went to, to the cinema a while back to see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah. That art house film. And, um, a woman sat next to me, huge, fat blubber of a woman. But she's, it's up to her. She's earned enough money. She can eat more than she needs. Sure, but don't squeeze into a seat next to me in the cinema, <laughs> right, with your flesh, you know, curving over the armrest that we're having to share. Oh, right, God. next to her, a little we weasel of a husband. She's got one of those huge, kind of, um, yeah, hog-sized was... barrels of popcorn. <laughs> you don't reckon he was one of them feeders? It was very similar. It oh. really was. She's, she's, she, as you say, she's chowing down on the, uh, on the popcorn. She's one of those women who, uh, she's not come out to see a film, she's come out to eat, and if a film happens yeah. to be showing, then she'll watch it. Yeah. Really wounds me up. He's got the hot dog and everything. She's in and out. Popcorn already annoys me because and I she don't... goes to him, are you gonna eat that? He goes, well, I was thinking of it. Look at me to me. Look at me now. <laughs> but I don't know why it was that popcorn became the thing you eat in the cinema. It's like you say, you've made these films, and someone's there thinking, well, we've made this great film, we've got the sound mix right, but what we need is something that will just slightly uh, irritate everyone yeah. during uh, the film. And just see the, the size, the just see the size of the bucket they're yeah. going there with popcorn. But and why not serve soup or something? Or, or yogurt? Oh, the slurping would drive me mad. But and and the spoon touching the, the, the bottom of the thing would drive me mad. Don't serve anything. There's no reason you have to do this in go, oh god, I need to eat. Well, this eat, was... plan it. You don't, you don't go and play tennis eating what? You, you plan it, don't you? Well, what? exactly. <laughs> exactly. Eat before you come out. Yeah. Have a sandwich. Have a corned beef sandwich. Do you know what? Right. What annoyed me is I found out in, in uh, across America when they showed Schindler's List, they banned popcorn, yeah. right, out of respect to the film. What? So they're saying all the other films? Oh, sorry, yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. But well, this one cost hundred million. Ah, doesn't matter. You can eat popcorn through that. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, ban it through all films. Well, this woman was one of those ones. She may as well have had a trough <laughs> in front of her. <laughs> I mean, she was a state, right? Oh, and she's God. Up. He's an idiot as well. Because the trailer comes from, I remember at the time, the trailer came on for AI, that film AI. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but it's something like, I don't know exactly, but it's something like, uh, um, Martin is a, uh, six-year-old boy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's 20, 20 kilograms, yeah, he's, he's three foot high, yeah. He's a little, he's a little, but he is, but he is not human. Yeah. He's a robot. Yeah. And she's watching, she just goes, she's just watching that, right? Bear in mind, the point of the trailer, he's a robot. Yeah. She says, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to slap her. I was livid. I went, he's a robot. He's a robot. That's what's important. <laughs> she, she says, uh, uh, a trailer comes on for a war film. She goes, I shan't be saying that. She just announces it. I shan't be saying that. And I'm bored with war films. <laughs> bored with them. Next. Oh, God. And, and then, so the, um, the, the title card comes up for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, like at the beginning, they yeah. do everything. Yeah. It comes up, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, she's in the cinema. She goes, what a stupid name for a film. <laughs> 
I was thinking, but you paid to see it. And, and then oh. it says subtitles in brackets. She goes, oh, it's not subtitled, is it? <laughs> so it comes on, and I think, I, in, in the film, I think they speak maybe Mandarin or, or Chinese or something, I'm not sure, but, but let's say it's Mandarin. So they come on, they start, and it's all subtitled, and they start speaking in this, uh, in this, uh, Mandarin or, or Chinese. And, uh, she just starts going, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong Chong, in the cinema, just saying that out loud. No. Like, she and her boyfriend are cracking up, they're all weeping with laughter, right? And I'm trying He's to watch this He's got to laugh, otherwise she bites him. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I'm actually, I'm so livid, so I really make a show of getting up with all my stuff, I get up and I kind of clamber over some of the seats. Yeah. I sit down next to these two teenage girls with the mobile phone. Oh, God. Mobile phone goes off, and like you say, instead of, I mean, it should have been off anyway. Yeah, of course. But let's say, instead of it being, uh, instead of immediately thinking, oh, God, and, and switching it off hurriedly, they take the call in the cinema. I'm in the cinema. Yeah, no, I'm in the cinema. Start having a conversation. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you're 16, unless that is your business partner in Hong Kong phoning you, <laughs> saying the deal is not going to go through, which I suspect it's not. I suspect it's probably Gareth, or Gavin, <laughs> or your boyfriend Tony saying, do you want to do me behind the bike sheds later? <laughs> yeah. I suspect that's who it is. Yeah. Switch off the phone, or very least, get out. I know. Get out of the cinema. But I just, I, I can't, I mean, I don't know where these people were brought up or raised. I don't know who it was that, that told them this was this was this was behaviour that you but could do. I, 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 well, I, I really want to have cinema police. Yeah. Right. You go in there, and if the, they, you, if the phone goes off, you get your money back, and you're asked to leave yeah. straight away. Straight away. Any whispering, you go. If you whisper again, you know. Yeah. If you're too stupid to be able to, to figure out what. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, they they tell you what age you should be. Right to get that film. Yeah, that's it. If you listen and you're not eating and you're not talking, then you should be able to get a film. Well, I, I was in the cinema last night, and as I came in, there was a big queue. And as I came in, there was people there uh, taking a ticket, it, showing you to your seat. Now, wh when did it happen that I was no longer able to find my own seat at the cinema? Why is it that I'm going in the daytime? I can find my. I'm left to fend for myself. But now it seems that on a Friday night, no. there's so many stupid people out no, there who can't I th find I their I decent that, seat. No, I think that is policing. I think that's to stop people thinking I'll just sit here and having to deal with it themselves. Because, mm. I mean, uh, if someone was in my seat, even if I, there was another seat, I'd go, well, no, that's mine. I, mm. I, I, mm. I want lots of, I want lots of policing yeah. in social occasions. Oh, I want yeah. to go into a pub and go, that is too loud, that music. Those people are too annoying, they're standing up, they're too annoying. I remember being in the cinema once and seeing a guy, he's a big fat guy again, he had popcorn, the hot dogs, the coke, right, and he had it balanced on this little wall that was, uh, uh, sort of separating parts of the cinema, and he was, you know, he, had, he was a big fat, you know, just sat there, I was watching, I think it was Beetlejuice I was watching, right. and, uh, some, uh, some local hard nuts, they were on the same row, they started kicking the little wall to, try to and knock, knock his off. food off, and I thought, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! I think you want to bully fat people. Yeah. Play a record, Carl, it's getting really nasty yeah. now. Can I pick on you? <laughs> 50 Cent, in the club, on XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing, this time about having help from me and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not, we, I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending, we're not we are pretending you are arguing. Yeah, I know, I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? I don't, wouldn't have thought so. We just need to, we can talk about it later, sort it out. Hmm. Yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stressed, though. And he doesn't really understand that, you know, so, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week, he's just got one job. Yeah. But and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you mm. know what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this will annoy you. Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that phone is ours. That phone is ours. Right? Apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We what? should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, look, he looks like Charlie Brown. He's got the same sort of hair arrangement as Charlie Brown. 
Yeah, he's, he's I don't like think Charlie was was balding though. Was he? he was only about ten? Well, no, but he just had like a couple of yeah. things on the top, and he's and he's his hairdo. Carl's had a hairdo that keeps. It's, it's not a hairdo. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what is it then? What is it? It's it just happened. I've told you. No, no, <laughs> the didn't. Noel was in, right, once. Noel who? Uh, Gallagher. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, right, your first name terms. Right. Yeah. And, uh... From the hood, isn't he? And, and whoever was doing the interview said, uh, oh, you know, what, will, will Liam be able to keep up that sort of hard attitude, right? Uh, say when he gets older and he goes bald, and, uh, you know, could he, could he still carry off the, the sort of attitude that he's got? And he was like, no, no, he'd, he'd never have that style. He couldn't, he couldn't have that style that lad's got in there. And pointed at me. Yeah. I said, it's not a style. <laughs> I said, I didn't go to the barbers and say, can you just, like, shave the top bit, leave the sides? <laughs> yeah. Can you move a little style <laughs> top? It's the way it is. Yeah. Right, and you were just saying to me, what would you do if you, if you went back in time? I'd probably use a better shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I wish we could tape the conversations we have off air. Yeah. Because, I mean, they are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you go back in time? And the other sh stuff we were just talking about is obviously can't talk about. Can I just ask though? Sorry, wh when did you when did you start to notice it was disappearing? I mean, at what age did it kick in? Uh, I, I worked a lot. You see, you, you'll you'll be safe. Do you know what I mean? Your hair will stay there. But it's when I used to do a lot of hours, a lot of hours working. <laughs> and yeah, that. you were stressed and things. Yeah. Yeah. Stressed yeah. out, yeah. and it just went. Well, I'm beginning to understand what stress is like, you know, because I'm not getting messages and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. probably about I don't know, twenty twenty four. That's uh, unlucky, isn't it? Something like that. And did you did you panic or did you were you just not quite not bothered? Not bothered. <laughs> He's not bothered. He wouldn't be bothered. I'm not bothered. <laughs> but I don't think for someone who doesn't care about going bald or war or SARS or anything, you don't have to get stressed on a Saturday between one and three. <laughs> to be fair, you are worse <laughs> than all those things. <laughs> SARS has got nothing on you when you're in the right mood. <laughs> but why, why is it all right for women then to, you know, have a wig? Well, I couldn't have one if I wanted one. Well, it's not a wig, they get bald treatment. They actually can get, they can get their hair replaced on the National Health, which might be anything, I suppose. Which might be wigs, which might be transplants. I mean, the only, the only cure for baldness is a transplant, which they literally take, um, follicles. They can get it down to individual follicles now from the back of your neck and, you know, it takes a long time. And, you know, but, um... Well, people will know anyway, won't they? I don't know when it starts, though. I don't know when it starts. Like, now, if you started wearing a wig, people go, we well, were wearing a wig because you were bald yesterday. Yeah. You can't, you can't start thinking, right, I'm gonna go bald in a year, I'll start wearing a wig now. That's the thing to do, isn't it? It is, really, if you're that bothered, but I wasn't, I just thought, right, it's losing it a bit, shaved a lot off. But did you know you had that round head underneath it? Did you know it was gonna be that funny, though? You would've, well, you presumably worn a wig, wouldn't you, if you'd have known? Cos I've never seen a head that round. I think the barber, when they did it, right, the woman said, you can pull that off, you've got a good shaped head for, uh, for uh, having it shaved. She, she meant- a good head. Yeah, she looks like a tennis ball. You look like a tennis ball when you haven't shaved. Mm. She said, if you can pull it off, she said, that's, that's like- a good thing to see if someone's good looking. If you, if they can have a bald head, it's like Sinead O'Connor. Yeah. Right? She can pull it off. There's, there's those sort of things. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, of Alice. No, but that's like one of the things. If, if you look good with a bald head, mm -hmm. that means you're pretty good looking. Yeah, yeah. And if you can wear a, a bicycle helmet and look good, that's <laughs> another thing that, like, you must be pretty good looking. Yeah. To yeah. pull that off. But who, who, who have you seen who in the bicycle helmet that you think, that you think's good? Who have you seen in a bicycle helmet and thought, oh god, they must be good looking, they're good in the bicycle helmet? Well, I everyone looks good. Saying, in the yeah. Who? No one looks good, do they? Really? It's so, not so what, what, do, do, would you say Brad Pitt would look good in a bicycle helmet? Well, I don't know. I'd have to see. But I'm just saying that's that's like one of the two things, really. That's. And what what blokes do you think look good bald? Who do you think would look good bald? Uh, don't know. Give me some names, and I'll tell you whether they'd be all right if they're bald. George Clooney. Uh, I don't. I, no, I don't think he does. I don't think he would do. Uh. Uh, who else? Well, this uh, could run and run. Um, Al Pacino. Uh, yeah, he could probably pull it off. He'd probably look all right. Do you think he looks all right with hair, then? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh. Well done, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Sony award-winning stuff. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> and then the car going, oh, he's stressed. He's stressed. Wild Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, little bald heady Carl Pilkington.
You quite like being bald, don't you? It's like no I, fuss. Like I say, you know, I, I'll probably s won't age for a bit now. <laughs> won't age for a bit? What do you mean you won't age for a bit? Because I, I already look quite, quite old. I don't think so. Not with, with a hat on, you look really young. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying, so I, I won't, I won't change that much. It's like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I actually don't think, if, if, as long as you shave it, whoosh, straight back, I, c I can't have you on that. Nothing wrong with it. But that kid who had that aging disease, just shave her head. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't age that fast anymore. Do you know what I mean? She so might... this is the five-year-old girl who had an awful disease where... Well, we don't know much about it, to be fair. No, we just know that you fell in love with the title of the programme, the girl that was older than her mum. Right? And you were annoyed that people wouldn't serve her fags and alcohol. If she, if she's, if she's, you know, she's living like an eight-year-old, let her have a fag. Doesn't that sum up this show, though? Carl's comment, <laughs> we don't know much about it. <laughs> yeah. We're still willing to make comments about it, to discuss it in length and possibly make crass jokes, <laughs> even though we're ill-informed, as ever. Yeah. Right, well, there's something for you, right? Go on. This is, this is what I wanted to tell you about, right? <laughs> Me. Uh, yeah, face transplants. <laughs> There's this, uh, this, uh, some kid somewhere, right, who had a bit of a, an odd looking face. Right? A bit of a what? Bizarre looking face. Yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> there's a doctor somewhere who said I can sort that out for yeah. you. Right? Sure. And basically what they do is they've got to get a face off a dead person. <laughs> right. That's sorry, sorry, just, um, in this, in, in this documentary you saw, no, did this was... documentary feature, say, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage? <laughs> was it, was it that documentary you saw? All right, listen, you, you see, you... go on. So, uh, um, okay, no, so apparently... face of a dead person, yeah, go no, on. Sorry, sorry to dismiss the idea of face transplants <laughs> out yeah. of hand, but go, go on. on. So, um, yeah, it's got to be a face of, of a dead body that isn't older than, like, four hours old. Right. Four hours dead, whatever. Mm. Um, they can take it off, mm -hmm. fit yeah. it on, fit it on the new face. It makes sense. It's but it's not just it. your face that you do, is it? But it's the muscle, it's muscle tissue and, and bones, isn't it, when it's like disfigured? It could be, could be through fire or whatever or disease or whatever. So they can't just literally plonk a face on, they have to do something else, don't they? You're asking Carl, like he's gonna know. <laughs> like he, I forgot then, he looked at it, I, that, was that in Russian? Yeah. I wish we could get, I wish we could get him on telly just to show the look on his face when I said that. Yeah. It, it was, was brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, you know when you, uh, go to a cat, hey, who wants some food then? And he just looks at you and yeah. he goes, it's almost like he can understand what we're saying. Mm. Go on. It's like if you had been caught holding a mallet over a dead body <laughs> by the police. <laughs> what Just I'm saying is, what I'm nothing. saying is, they, 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 it would sort of work, yeah. If you took, if you peeled your face off mm. and put my face on it, that, oh my god, why don't you and Steve, for an experiment, swap faces? And, and the great see, thing is, I wouldn't age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you do that if, if I could, if it was safe? <laughs> uh... I, I think I'm getting the rough deal here, though. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well, no, you would, you'd get some money back, it'd be part exchange. I mean, it would, you know, it's like you'd, you'd make up the difference just to wear your brilliant face for but, a week. But the doctor was saying how, um, it's not complicated. He said the worst thing is something about, uh, the people who were related to the dead person. It's a bit weird for them still seeing the face of someone they know walking about when they're sure. dead. Yeah, I can see yeah. that would be odd, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Carl. You are brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, you're never a dull moment. Would, it would it you, doesn't matter whether you're talking or I'm squeezing your head. It's, uh, it's, I'm never bored. I never go, oh, that's enough, Carl. Do you know what I mean? I never, I used, I got battling tops, I got bored. It's like computer games, you think it's the best game in the world, and someone goes, how are you getting on with Tomb Raider? You go, oh, I don't play it anymore. I go, how's Carl? I go, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I was squeezed there yesterday, I was squeaking in his face, I got him down to the ground. He said this, he said that. I'm never bored with you. It, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. <laughs> Until quiz with the scale electrics. <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, <laughs> when there's no one else who will have you on the team, sure. and oh, suddenly you want to be your best mate. Done him again! Right? My, yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe uh, it. I love the fact you can insult me, but never insult my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs>
Peter, <laughs> Buck Rogers, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Rich and Carl Vickens. Carl, Carl just said to me, he said, what face would you have to me? And I went, what do you mean? He went, well, whose face would you have? And I went, I don't know, uh, a, a boy's, so uh, the skin would be regenerated. He went, I know, I'd be a bit weird. He said, oh no, someone famous. And I went, oh, I don't know. I went, whose would you have? He went, Barry Sheen. <laughs> No, but what I meant was when I was talking Barry to Suzanne, Sheen. when I was talking to Suzanne about it, yeah. saying this is amazing, she said, "Well, whose face would you have?" Right now, it's got to be fairly recent to have the skin fresh because it can't be too old. Right. So I had a choice of like Barry Sheen yeah. or uh, what's her face or Flash the Summer Wine. Who? Uh, who's the old woman who just passed away? Thora Heard. Thora Heard. <laughs> So that's what I meant, if I could have any face, because she said, well, you could have had Tom Cruise or something. Mm. I said, well, he's not dead. <laughs> she said, no, but you could have had that. You could give yourself restrictions in your fantasy. So when I look down to your picture, I love the idea that someone getting you a call. Uh, Mr. Wilberton, uh, oh, it's Dr. Hanrahan. Um, Barry Sheen has just passed away. And you go, oh, dear. Um, yeah, bad news and good news. Um, do you want his face or...? <laughs> Do you want his face? Does Suzanne go out with you, like, for charitable reasons? <laughs> I love Is it like you can adopt I love a boyfriend? That, I love the fact that she encourages you. Oh, she, you. She was saying about Tom Cruise and I was like, oh... You know, she said, you know, he's not a bad looking fella or whatever. Do, well, what she's saying is, Carl, is there any chance you could go and get a different face? Maybe something like Tom Cruise would yeah, be but good. Then, then I was saying, right, first of all, he's got to be dead and he's not. Okay. But if he was, and you had that done, would you feel like people were looking at you on the tube? Well, no, like say if the people who made Mission Impossible said, "Well, what to do a third one?" <laughs> would I then? Would I be in my right to say, "Well, I don't want to do it"? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking. About. I don't mean to be <laughs> offensive, Carl, but your girlfriend could do a lot better than you. <laughs> I don't know what I love thinking. the idea of this whole conversation about you with Tom Cruise's face and then get off with a film. But why, go, why does she have conversations like this with you? He was now on last night. He was now on the telly. Oh, I on the love chat. it. Uh, what should we talk about? What about uh, getting a new face? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, was, oh, that cartoon. Um, if you don't know what Carl looks like, there's a cartoon that was in last week's heat, isn't it, that I drew. It was on the website. What's, what's it going for now? Bid. I think it's at about, uh, 225 quid at the moment. And what do they have to do to bid for it? Uh, just, just email in and I'll pass it on to the website people. I know why Heat put it in. It's cos the editor, Boyd Hilton, looks a little bit like you, doesn't he? Sort of my ugly brother. <laughs> he's probably listening and he says nice things about you. Yeah, he can still say nice things, but I bet he knows deep down. You know if you're good looking or not, don't you? <laughs> Steve. I mean, what it's do you going, think? It's going, <laughs> this is going, this is going crazy, no, Carl, I don't know, you, you're just, the insults are flying left, right and centre, you've got no limits. You've just gone crazy, you've just gone wild. You're swanning around just because you look like Tom Cruise. I think it's because he's been hanging out with Christian O'Connell. Yeah. And they're both thinking, yeah, we're... Co a couple of media players. Yeah. Too big for their boots. Yeah, not scared, although he's scared of Christian. No, he's terrible. He's scared about. of Christian in here because he's not allowed to do monkey news. No, Because yeah. Christian wants to do it, he's scared of him. I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Christian wants to do some monkey news. I'm not allowed. Went around the block. Badly drawn boy. I like him. He's funny as well. You know what? I think he looks like if me and you were put in a blender, Carl. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's sort of, he's got my sort of shape. He's got your sort of accent and all that. Uh, when you put in a blender, does that, <laughs> would a voice sort of mix? <laughs> Sometimes I thought of putting the two of you in a blender. <laughs> Do you remember? Cool. I, I told you that thing about the sponges, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, that, that freaked him out. You know, if you get uh, two sponges and uh, you dye one red and one blue and you liquidise them, we pour them into a tank of water. After a couple of hours, there's a blue sponge and a red sponge because their cells know well, they, and they, they reform. And do you know what he said? He went, how do you kill a sponge then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, what a great thing to say. Oh, my back's killing me, because I, I, I went, um, you know, I, I did my back in last week and I had to get a chiropractor out and I couldn't walk. Well, as soon as I could walk, I mean, I came in here on my day off and did a 
when you were in Bristol with your mum and dad looking mm. after you. Um, and, uh, and then I went to Salfridges Sunday and- Well, you got a bit of money now, why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, I went into the sports department and, uh, there's a golf simulator there. Thirty-eight thousand pounds, oh. and it's just like a shed. And I was looking at it like a kid in a sweet shop. And the two blokes that work there, uh, uh, they recognised me. Went, all right, I do. I said, yeah, good. I mean, I was just looking at that, that simulator. It's brilliant. And he went, do you want to have a go? And I went, no, I'm crap. I can't do it. I said, oh, and I got a bad back. And then I went, you have a go. And he did it. And he cut down. He went, oh, that's not bad. And he went, do you want to go? I went, yeah, go on then. <laughs> and and I put the ball down. And I really tried my hardest. Of course you did. And it took off. And it was really good shot. And he went, good. I went, I went well. I said, oh, I'll go. And I was thinking, I've got to hit this one as well. I've got to hit this one too. And I hit it again. I had three goes. I hurt my back after the first one. <laughs> yeah, but you and, on. and it went, right, I said, cheers, thanks very much. And I walked away. <laughs> and I went to Jane. I went, I've got to get a cab. She went, oh, I've done my back. She went, well, why did you show off? I went, I had to. Of course you did. That I sums you up. <laughs> that just I was in agony. I was all the way back. I was, I had to lay on the floor and put ice on my back again for about three hours. What Good. was the best you <laughs> thought could happen? <laughs> that they would just say, oh my God, that guy, <laughs> that's Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Is there nothing he can't do? That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. As I, as I was, I'll see you later. I go, cheers, yeah. As I got about a few yards away, I just slowed down and I, and Jane go, what are you waiting for? I go, listen. Yeah. And it did this go, that man. He's a god. Yeah. And I go, come on, Jane, let's go home. <laughs> yeah. That's it's just it. all. Uh, have you ever <laughs> been able to walk through a fairground, pass one of those machines, those test your strength machines, yeah. and not have a go at it? Uh, 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 I don't think I'd be very good at that. I bet you cannot walk past one of those rifle ranges and not have a go. I love, I love rifle but ranges. But you've got to be the best, I imagine. Yeah, if someone had just won before me, I'd go, it's not worth it, it's fixed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Pathetic. Yeah, so that's why my back's good. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But I also, I don't, I hate not being able to do stuff. It's like I'm punishing the injury. Yeah. I know yeah. if I laid in bed for a week, it'd be better, but I go, no, why should I? Yeah. It, it, I've used to, I used to, when I used to work kid, I used to hit my head on the banister or something, and I used to go and get a hammer and hit the banister. <laughs> and then I started thinking, um, uh, <laughs> when I was about eight, I remember if I'd hurt myself, I'd go, ha ha, God, didn't hurt. <laughs> 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 He's up there thinking, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> How mental is that? Carl, <laughs> what are you thinking, mate? All right, rock busters, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Straight to it. Straight to it. Go on, then. Who's the winner? Right, oh, go on, do the clues again. Right, the first one was, uh, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah, snappy, go on. VH. Yeah. Right, that was Van Halen. Van Halen. Halen of Van. Because he wanted something bigger than a car, that's the, that's the first one. Yeah. Uh, All the tenses are mixed up, <laughs> everything, it's just, we could uh, go on. Second one, don't be selfish, uh, and some of that out to your mates, that was C, that was Cher, all right, it's all right. Yep. And the third one, uh, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails, the initials there, KL, they, uh, Kenny Loggins. Right. <laughs> Right, that's, that's the last the time we do blockbusters. That no. is the last time we do it. No, no. It is. That's the last time. Give, give, it, give the prize to someone. Kenny Loggins. Uh, I'm gonna give that one Kenny to- Kenny uh, Loggins. Helen Perrett, she, uh, has emailed in, and, uh, actually, Helen, I need you to, uh, email in your address, if you would, so we can send you those, uh, goodies, DVDs in the bag and stuff. Brilliant. But who would get Kenny Loggins? If the, if the clue was good, who would get Kenny Loggins? What did he do? Footloose? Yeah. That famous film about that, where, right? where dancing was banned. Yeah. In that nebulous, uh, yeah. So that's an extraordinary film. I saw it once in America. <laughs> like you say, Kevin Bacon in a town where dancing has been banned. I was watching it. It was like if aliens had been watching Earth, but only monitoring us through our TV and, and films. Yeah. And then tried to make a film about humans. That's the film they'd end up with. What do they think, uh, what do they think, uh, they think of uh, Queen the Musical? Because they're, of course, <laughs> rock and roll's band, <laughs> isn't it? In the future. That's I'm not looking forward to the future, Rick, where feelings and emotions are going to be banned. I, I can't believe it. Where's our hoverboards? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well done to, uh, to Helen Perry. Is that the last time we do Rockbusters? No. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, after the break, Monkey News. No, we'll, we'll play, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do a break. Don't know about Monkey News, got some other stuff. As well. We did monkey news after oh, the break. Yeah. Radiohead, they're there. Like everything they ever do, that's grown on me more and more. Oh, that is brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, you know what it's time for, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> It always gets me, that jingle. It's a joy. Yeah. What's what, please? Well, Carl, 
Do you reckon you could talk? Oh, do, do other people that have real jingles with their name on it and, that and don't have to say who's in the room, what's happening, and do their own jingles? Well, Christian's got one for it. For Monkey News that he does. Why is Christian doing Monkey News? I don't understand this. Because he did it ages ago. So you ripped it off of no, Christian? I haven't, I haven't ripped it off. I said to him, I said, there's enough Monkey News to go round. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right? hold on though, I don't want cast offs. I, I thought this was your idea. Well, let's not do it. But what's no, but wait, new? Wait, wait, Come wait, on, wait. What's new? What? There's monkey news out there. It, it, I mean, if he wants to have a meeting in the week and say, well, this is the news I've got, the way I see it is, he can do it in the week. He's doing like the, you know, the news at 10 type monkey news. We're on on a Saturday. We're like the, you know, Jeremy Paxman monkey news night. We look at stuff in more in depth. Well, you're very much right? behind the monkey news, it's true. Yeah. You sort of interpret it. You give it your own speech. You're, you're, you're the man behind the monkey behind the news. I mean, I know that. <laughs> yeah. So, are we, so but ours isn't called monkey news anyway. It's sort of generic term like the news, but ours is called chimpanzee that, isn't it? Yeah, but he's, he's seen a bit of monkey news in it. Oh, so, hey. are we doing it or not? Well, I, I, I've got no reason I, I, to stop I, doing I, monkey I, news. I, I, it, it, he probably played Radiohead as well. Well, should I know. Should we not do that? I said that David Attenborough did monkey news before all of us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I mean, I personally don't listen to Christian because I don't get up that early. So, you know, I'm missing no, out on a lot of monkey news. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, it's I'm not, I'm, what I'm saying, I don't listen to it because I don't get up that early. Right, I'm not right. saying it's a bad show. My yeah. point is this, there's a lot of people I imagine who don't listen to, uh, monkey news in the week, they're perhaps they miss it, they're busy. It's nice to have a little kind of omnibus monkey news at the weekend <laughs> with Carl Pilkington. So right. that's what this is. So we're doing it then. Let's play the jingle. Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news night. <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, um, we'll sort of uh, get some monkey experts on maybe next week to dissect it. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. There's this monkey. Right? Oh, yeah. It's called Jack. Yeah. All right. I got pally with this bloke who worked in a railway station. <laughs> How? How? Pen pals? I, I don't know. I didn't say all internet, that. I'm just the internet. I'm not sure. on the internet. I'm sure. <laughs> So, um, anyway, he's helping him out all the time. It's this fella's job, right, to, uh, sort of make sure it's safe for the trains to come in, that sort of thing, right? But he's always working on his own, so he's, he's got his mate Jack in with him, right, this, this little monkey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're having a good time. They share lunch together and stuff like that. Anyway, it gets to a point when the fella whose job it is, right, starts mm -hmm. getting old, uh, and Jack, the monkey, starts getting more involved. Presumably this is a chimpanzee as opposed <coughs> to a monkey, you mean? When I you say it's monkey, uh, it's generic term, you mean, you mean... You mean chimps usually, don't you? Yeah. Go on then. <clears throat> so, um, you know, he's, he's clocking the fella doing his job and he's thinking, I can do this. All right, the monkey. Okay. I love it. Yeah. He's helping out, he's uh, pulling down the levers and stuff, yeah. so the train sort of come in on the right line. Sure, 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 yeah. He's yeah, clocking yeah. it, he sticks his head out of the little window, see the trains come in and that. I have British Rider listening. Yeah. All right. Uh, in the end. Oh, yeah. The fella whose job it is, he lost a leg for some reason, couldn't work anymore. Lovely. Gave Jack the job. Yes. Right. Okay. The railway company happy with that. I'm <laughs> sure they, they 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 interviewed a number of people, but he was the best monkey for the job. <laughs> and that's that's good, isn't it? Well, it's not true. Right. Once again. Well, it's not true. Don't hand Steve a piece of paper that someone put on the internet who is probably a bigger mentalist than you. That's not proof. It's not true. At no point. Did a railway company give a chimpanzee the job of signalman? It was ages ago. Uh, uh, what? Steve, when was it? it was before like before trains, probably. Well, well, it's, uh, in the 1880s. Yeah. Uh, according to this piece of paper, which is what you've based your monkey news on. Now, of course, I think ITN and a lot of the news channels, they tend to get lots of independent <laughs> confirmation of their news before they give it out as fact. <laughs> but you've got an email from someone, so let's assume that's real. It says, for this, Jack was officially put on the railway payroll earning two cents per day and have half a bottle of beer on Saturday. <laughs> That's what we pay you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even get the beer. <laughs> oh, dear, he's not allowed to drink, are you? Someone emailed in, actually, and said, uh, Carl, some years ago, did you die? And they took your face <laughs> and transplanted it onto that of a chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> it would make a lot of sense. I've never seen you. Never. He always, he always has um, t-shirts right down up and long sleeves. I bet he's hairy under there. Yeah. I bet you are hairy because you have to shave right up to your eyes. You're one of them, aren't you? And I can see the growth and it comes out the, the top there. Are you really hairy underneath? I'm pretty hairy. Are you really? Well, what's wrong with, what's wrong with that? You're a, you're a human Z, aren't you? That's why you're fascinated with them and why you, your, your IQ is sort of about 80. I think you might be. 
You might not, I, I don't mean uh, there was any, I think it was a genetic sort of, sort of throwback. Well, you're pretty hairy. Look <laughs> at your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Just, look, give me that banana and shut up. Play a record. That's mine. Jerry Breaks. Average man on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly another show over, Carl. You know, I've got a squeaky chair there. Why don't you sort that out? Have it oiled? What do you, what do you do in the week? Do you know what I mean? Can I just, um, nominate a woman that annoyed me today? Go on. Uh, on the tube. I got off at Piccadilly Circus. Um, the sign says, mind the gap. Big sign saying, mind the gap. Voice on the, uh, tannoy says, mind the gap. Woman steps over the gap, goes, oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I was living. I was just annoyed. I wanted to slap her. There's always one in there every day. Well, just, so, so as you walk down the street, I just feel like I want to squat certain people out the way. Well, squat them out the way. We like went. It. We went into this uh, uh, little restaurant. Me and go to uh, me and Carl. Was it Thursday? And we're sitting down there, and um, it's busy outside. And we were going to sit at the back. She went. That's no smoking. I went. Yeah, we're not going to smoke. So we sit there right at the back. Right? We get there, and there's just another. There's two women. That right. And I'm sitting there, and they light up a fag. And I go to Carl. There meant to be no smoking. He went, yeah, so what? I went, well, it's the principle. The rules are there. He goes, he goes, rules? You say twat, muff, and shit on air. Then mind rules. I went, well, they've annoyed me now, right? Yeah. So the waitress just comes over and he's putting, he goes, oh, God, he puts his head down. Well. I said, uh, I said, uh, I don't know why I said it like this. I went, um, I thought it was just no smoking. <laughs> of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> she went, it is, yeah. And I went, right, okay, well, they're smoking. She went, she went, oh, well, you'd have to move then. I went, what? She went, do you want to smoke? I said, no, I don't want to smoke. I, they're, I said, they're smoking over there, right? Try not to, uh, and she went, oh, well, I told you. I said, no, I don't want to smoke. They're smoking. <laughs> she went, oh, right, and I got, I got a move, didn't I? See, that's what it. a little snitch. <laughs> yeah. But it annoyed me. Do you worry, though, that, that someone's <laughs> gonna look around and go, it's like Ricky Gervais off the telly? Yeah, well, I can't complain now. I swear, if I go in, I get bad service, I can't complain, because I think, oh, look at him, he thinks he can complain. So I have to do it, I have to do it, um, secretly. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But, um, uh, oh, there was a, uh, oh, God. Right. People come up to me, they recognise me, and they all give a lot of us, and I, I don't mind it at all. I don't know, I never know what to say, and I'm always, you know, I say, thank you very much, I say, love the show, whatever, I say, of course, and, and that's great, and they're polite. And I was in the pub the other day, uh, and I was just with Johnny, and, um, people have been coming up, they go, do you mind if I said, no worries at all, yeah, absolutely fine, all right? And, um, and then this group came in, about eight, twenty-somethings, right? And they're, they're a bit pissed up. And this woman comes up to me, right, and she goes, she stands there, she goes, ah, right, we like you in our house, right, but you're not as good as Paul Calf. And I went, oh, yeah, Steve Coogan, I said, he's brilliant, isn't he? She went, yeah, yeah, you're not as good as him. I went, oh, well. You know, it's not bad to come second to, is it? And then, because I did that, she went, she went, ah, oh, no, you're, you know, really, yeah, you're great. Like, I've just done my dissertation. I went, oh, right, well, it's in nursing. She went, yeah. She went, ah, oh, right. Anyway, she went, ah, oh, can I have a hug? And I went, well, hmm. she went, can I have a kiss? I went, well, not really. No. And then this woman who wanted to take a photo, she went, oh, you were so nice on the BAFTAs. I went, well, I am being nice. I just, I'd rather, I, you know, I don't know you. And I, I was, oh, God, it was embarrassing, right? And then, um, so I took a picture, right? And then she goes, anyway, and they sort of dragged her away. They sort of dragged her away. And then, I, uh, I was going, oh, God, 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 I've got to go now, because they're over there. I said, I can't, I can't stand it. I don't mind. Her. And, uh, she came and she, she came over and she went, Ricky, and she sat down and I went, I'm going. Uh, and I just, I had to go. And then I was with Johnny, and Johnny went, oh, God, I've left my bag there. So we had to go back to the bag. She's going through the bag. Oh. She, she, and she went to me, you bastard! I'll never effing watch you again! I thought, well, all right. I don't know what to say, yeah. really. Nice of her to clean up her bad language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she Family knew. Pub. <laughs> I know, she No, knew. I just, I got no time for it. I just think it's, I know. it's out of order. You know, I, I mean... This, this whole sort of notion that, that it's, if you're a celebrity, you're public property, I, I just, I discount it. They go, people, you know, what, you hear people say, oh, it's me who put you where you are today. And I think, well, yeah, thanks for watching, but, but we made the show and everything. I we know. Put it, we put it on the TV. It's not like, if you get a plumber around, he does his job of work for you, you don't go around his house and hassle him. I don't, or, it's not, I don't seek it. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't phone up the, uh, but you know what I mean? I don't try and get on the telly or anything, and uh, I refuse to, I don't go to showbiz parties, but I refuse not to go to the pub with my mate. And I just seek out, there's fewer and fewer pubs, and I just go to the, the quietest, you know, one old bloke and a dog. And it's sort of like... But most people are really... I love brilliant. it, honestly, honestly. But, people but, who come out and they're polite, and I, 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 I love people, the show. It's like... It's alcohol, it's alcohol, yeah, I know. Uh, it's just, oh, God. They mutate into something, you know, And they different. just, yeah, they, they understand, yeah, of course they don't, 
You know, they're not. They're but to me, it's the same people who who who, who be bad, behave badly in the cinema. It's just this breed of person. It just, it just. I mean, I know. Can I put them in room one hundred and one? Let's do that next week, shall we? What are we all having a moan? Yeah, go on. Tell you who's annoyed me this week. Go, go on. If we're making a little feature. Go on. David Blunkett. What's Blunkett been up to? He's, uh, he's reading yesterday. His, his, dog pot's been, he's not, his dog's not been round your house again. No. Nope. Causing trouble outside. He's put a stop to people having sex outdoors. What's, what do you mean? What's up with that? <laughs> if he had sight, would he have stopped it? <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> I thought we were not trying to offend anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Badly drawn boy! On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Jones with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'll tell you what, the Sony's is then. Oh, -ho -ho. this Thursday. This Thursday at the Grosvenor House Hotel. Yeah. Everyone in radio, anyone has uh, entered their show in different categories saying, oh, you know, they get, they get it down to, you know. Winners uh, this year included the brilliant Dominic Mohan, former uh, showbiz editor of The Sun. Uh, lots of lot lots of people won. Lots of people won. Lots of people won gold. Lots of people won silver. Lots of people won bronze. We didn't get a sausage. <laughs> Nothing. This show was deemed not, not worthy of anything. I mean, not not a look in. The panel looked at it and said, "Well, no, definitely not. not radio." Didn't get a, didn't get a vote. See, that that annoys me on so many levels. Let me let me tell you one. Right, I've never complained about losing an award. Okay, ever. Yeah, in, mainly in TV. I know we've won a lot, but we've been beaten a couple of, Beaten by Peter Kay. Good luck to him. He's brilliant. Um, uh, beaten by Phoenix Knights in sitcom. A lot of people like that more than the Oscars, uh, and vice good. versa, right? Uh, n no qualms. But the shoddy shite that I heard that night beating us, I was furious. I don't understand. There's, there's people, regional, it sounds like hospital radio, right? They, I mean, I shouldn't even be on XFM. I thought, uh, you know, it, it, it's beneath me. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, I'll give them a hand, right? Let's show them. And I want to know who the panel was as well. I, I do not believe it. Uh, how can they dip? Um, I was looking back over the, some of the shows, right? Before I go, to Carl, and I've just done a little excerpt of, a, you know, a trailer of what we, what we do, what we're about. And I don't know how the panel could overlook. this. Play a bit, Carl, please. Shaking her muff, minge, <laughs> and tits around does not make her a hoe. Then what does? These kids at school with big heads. Carl, what are you talking about? Shut. Oh, well, my name is Holy Fuck. Right, there's yeah. this monkey that uh, was on a train station. Right. What, you, the what if you mean cock to mean penis? <laughs> well, it was me Down syndrome son. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> so we've still got monkey news coming up. <laughs> You're an idiot. You know what I mean? That's to me quality broadcast. I don't know how they can say that isn't worthy. That's what we sent in <laughs> to the Sony people. <laughs> they listened to that. How they didn't think that was dynamite stuff. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about this since Thursday, because I've been a little bit uh, down in the dumps. Yeah. What I think it is, is that with the radio, with the TV show, the TV stuff we've done, Rick, we put a lot of work into that. Yeah. We, we get the script, we got the script, we, yeah. we spend a lot of time on it. What this show is about, it's very much about spontaneity, it's about our personalities, and I don't think we're ever going to win an award for our personalities. <laughs> I think that's where we're going Do you know on. what I think? I think that when we're together, we're with the auteurs of The Office and, you know, and uh, we're strong on it, and we're just two. Uh, we write it, we direct it, yeah. we, you know, we, we cast it. We, 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 we even worry about the font and stuff on the, you know, we do everything. Mm. Mm. There's a weak link in our midst, I well, think. On the radio show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, yeah, well, yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to think what the common factor is, because on the um, award-winning TV show, well, it's best you and I. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, can we play a record? And uh, let me think about this, because there must be some, there must be something. There's got to be a factor. That isn't in the office that's in this, that means that the office is award-winning, and this is a pile of shite. Brown Sugar by, uh, The Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with Steve Merchant. And with us, um, Carl, Carl Pilkington, the third, third member of this, um, team. Mm. Team. We and, me and you do The Office. Award winning. Yeah, and me, us three do this, do this show. No awards. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Carl, what, what are your thoughts? What do you think's wrong with the show? Why do you think the panel listened to our show and said that is awful. It's not actually a radio show. Well, what? can I just point out, so many people may not realise that last year we won a bronze, so we've actually gone down. We've actually slid off the list all yeah. entirely. I know, but I mean, that, that, yeah, but Carl wasn't really as involved last well, year. Well, I remember last, last year, we, you, it was very much you yeah, and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we just, we just started out bronze. on it, yeah, so I mean, so you can't really, you can't really compare. Hold on, though. Well, what? Interesting, interesting. What do you think, Carl? What, what do you think the reason False is? Thoughts, Carl? Any thoughts? I see what you're getting at. 
Right, but- You're not stupid. But, when I put the compilation together, yeah. I made sure that it was mainly you two. Mm. Mm. So don't, don't be, uh, don't be doing that. Don't be playing that game. So, oh, so you put the compilation together? Yeah. Right, again. Ah, right, interesting, because we, we were involved with we that. We usually do the office, edit the office and everything, we have the final cut on the office. So you, oh, I see, so yeah, you, oh, so right, no, 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 so you're the you had your fingers all over it, interesting. Yeah, well, oh, that's interesting. So, oh, well, um, uh, that, so the tape was the smoking gun and whose fingerprints were on it? Carl Pilkington's, Yeah. That's interesting, we didn't get a sausage. Mm. But, you know, uh, do you know what, uh, seriously though, you know, you well, I don't I mean seriously. It is his fault. I know, but I mean, we we it's our fault as well because we should have known better, right? But than to employ him. Yeah. But um, I actually think it's a slap in the face. I mm. want to know where the panel was. A lot of Sony are thinking just handing it out to the same old people. Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Every clip they played was a funny phone call. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And so I'm Did actually. Did we send any of our funny phone calls in? So if anyone, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone cares, I think I, th I, th I think we should knock it on the head as a oh, protest yeah. against Sony. As I say, I've never complained before about the, but I mean this one, don't know what they, don't know what I think. I want, I w or I want someone on the panel, it was entertainment, I want someone on the panel to phone up and say why they think this show is rubbish. Well, I'll, I'll apologise. Well, I'll not apologise, if they stand by the, if they tell me why, you know, because, you know, listening to that, that clip there, I can't see anything wrong with that as, no, sure. as sort of, you know, daytime radio. It's interesting. I mean, I, I don't think um, our number one fan, Dickie Anderson, Richard Anders, was uh, on the on the panel. Although he here has emailed in, he's Go got on, a couple of thoughts as to maybe why we. What we is Dickers doing, man? Uh, Dickers says commiserations on not winning a Sony. I can't believe you didn't win. Naturally. Oh. I mean, apart from your show's obvious lack of quality and effort, having a monkey for a producer, offering the biggest load of tat as competition prizes, <laughs> saying hairy Chinese kid 48 times every show, <laughs> rockbusters, not bothering to turn up for weeks on end, only having three listeners, introducing the comedy characters Camp David Har Harry Fook, which I think he spelt wrong there, yeah. Stephen Merchant, I'm not a character. <laughs> Apart from insulting every race, religion, and sexual orientation, bickering like schoolgirls, we and haven't done everyone misery. yet. We have not insulted everyone yet. We've, there's loads to go. Despite the fact you generally bring misery into the lives of anyone who listens, I thought you were surefire winners. Better luck next year. Well, I mean, a couple of constructive, you know, criticisms there, but generally, I no. still can't nail it. Was he on the panel? Well, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, he's a fan, so. Yeah. Well, no, he, he's clearly a fan. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, love, he obviously loves the show. He's because he's. I mean, he has hit the nail on the head, oh. which. Yeah. But uh, yeah. what should we do? Should, should we give up or should we try harder? That that's always my dilemma in sure. life. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've I've always gone for the first one. Give up. Yeah. yeah why yeah, why yeah, bother? Yeah. yeah. If they, if they can't see, just give just give us the award, yeah. and then worry about it later, and we won't let them down. Yeah. Now they've got they've got blood on their hands. Mm. We're gonna. Yeah. What should we do? To give a month, couple of months notice. I think so. Okay. Well, there you yeah, go. I mean, seriously, I mean, I, because well, I'm, I think. Well, I'm busy. I'm not being wacky now. Um, we haven't told Andrew, but uh, I I'll, think I'll, we've won our course with this show. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's. Okay, we will give it a month, and it's because the Sony's yeah. didn't give us anything. Play record. Yeah. There well, you go. Well, you got to do a bit longer than that. No, we haven't. Got to give a month's notice. No, you got to work till about September if you're gonna. No, we haven't. Yeah. No, we can give a month notice. We, you know, whatever they give the money back somehow. We, we, well, we. Well, well, you give your money back. Yeah, I know. What are you, what are you gonna spend your 80 quid on? <laughs> True. By the way, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. So, a few more shows. And then I, that's I, it. I hope Sony are happy. Mm. They should encourage, you know, we've only been radio, you know, a couple of years. Exactly. Trying. They should encourage young, ta you encourage young talent yeah. like you. Yeah. Instead of giving it to Radio 1 and Radio 2 yeah. and... The old war horses. We just had a quick email. I wonder if you can answer this. It's James from NWL. He says, Ricky, is Carl going to be on this week's show? Please let me know, as I may listen if he's not. <laughs> um, sadly, oh, he is here. Oh I mean, dear. people are already turning against you, Carl, because they've seen what's happened. Yeah. I think they've probably realised that we've I think we gave you too much. Enough. I think, exactly. I think we've got a spoiled sort of kid in our hands. It's sort of like, you know, we, we knew, we knew how bad he was, but we were trying to sort of bring him out of his shell a little bit. Yeah. Encourage, you've got to encourage sort of. Um, children like Carl. Well, yeah, exactly. Just exactly. sort of fend for themselves. Mm. Um, but, uh, I like the fact that Dickie Anderson had that wonderful rant. It, I mean, it was an articulate email, it was quite long, and he must have typed it immediately. I'm thinking, because he's a fan of the show and he, he thinks I'm a, you know, a genius, we need a PA. Sure. Don't we? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon he'd come and work for us? Um, well, he can't be any worse than what we've already got. <laughs> 
I know. Um, you know. So, there you go, then. We're giving up- we're giving up radio. We're gonna concentrate on television. Carl's gonna probably go back to what? Your little- just doing your well, sound. The thing I won a silver for at the Sony's. Funny that, mm. isn't it? Oh, you won a silver, did you? I got a silver, yeah. Oh, for yeah doing, what was that for? for doing the proper job that I do here in the week. Oh, well, no, it was two of you for a start. Yeah. Well, there's three of us. Can't even get a bronze. Now, who's the weak link? <laughs> right? Well, it's a bit weird, isn't it? let's get. Let's look. Let's get, let's not argue. We haven't got many shows to do. To be fair, though, this this show is, is. I think it's more to do with the fact that you talk on this show that has brought us staying. Right, I haven't said anything hardly today. No, well, this is an award-winning show potentially. <laughs> we'll add this one in for yeah. next year. <laughs> oh. If you could just keep stum, we might have a chance. All right. Well, coming up, right? Carl. Let's put it behind us. Okay. Let's draw a line under it. Um, we had a meeting yesterday. We thought we better you know, for the last few shows, plan it a little bit. Mm. And me and Steve came up with a great idea. We're gonna offer Carl money to do stuff. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's the quality of the ideas on this. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, I've brought some money in, like, little stuff, because we had him- we had him showering with our mate Johnny for a thousand pounds yesterday, Yeah, we, we just got into a discussion and then one of us suggested that how much would it cost us to pay you, Carl, <laughs> to have a shower with another man? Not- and there's nothing going, going you don't, on. No, no, there's nothing going on. You just- you're just in a shower, a normal shower, you're just watching- e washing each other, having- uh, no, not each other, just yourselves. Yeah. You're just, you're just having a chat. Yeah, right, watching you go, yourselves, yeah. having a shower. Yeah. But and it's it, a regular we, shower in a, in a regular yeah. house. It's not a shower in and a he, And pool. he went fine. He got we got he got a thousand pounds out of it. He wouldn't do nine hundred. He got a thousand pounds out of it. But then we said, and we'll have to watch to make sure you do it. Yeah. And he went, no, that's weird. So, but what, why? What's it? Was, I mean, this is what annoys me, though, right? The whole idea of, oh, what would you do, right? <laughs> so I bet you missed out there when what? we started this chat saying, oh, I wonder what you'd do for money. It did start off with, would you rub Dale Winton's neck? <laughs> would you give Dale Winton a massage <laughs> for 20 what? quid? No, we, but we, yeah, but it's you have to say no, 500. You could, you got, we're trying to find out what your price is. What price, Carl, is the name of the show. So, so you'd, would you give, um, uh, uh, Dad Whitten just a, he's got a knot, he's got a bit of a knot, he's stressed, he's been doing supermarket sweep, and he's furious, one of the contestants was answering back, calling him names, and he's got, he's got all knots in his neck. You just put your, th just give him a little bit of a, you know, five minutes. <laughs> a little neck massage. How much would you do that for? He's naked and it's just a little neck massage. Nothing, there's nothing going on. It's like See, there you you're go. naked as well. Naked. But it's I'm, just no, a two of you naked at giving him a little massage. No, no, seriously. Uh, would you would you give him? Um, okay, would you would you give me a foot massage? For how much? Well, that, well that's, that's what's so your that's price. And what are the rules though? Can I wear gloves? No, no, no. Just just, just uh, you know. Let's start off simple. Would you take off my shoes and socks? Uh, for for I'd do it for like. Fifty quid. That's, you've got okay, that's okay. No, no, twenty quid to take off one mm -hmm. shoe and one sock, but like you mean it. You just take the shoe off, you go, uh, and as you're pulling down my sock, you pull the sock down slowly, you look me in the eyes and go, what lovely ankles. <laughs> Seriously, how no, much? Not... What price? Uh, twenty quid a foot. Twenty quid a foot. That's got so, to be worth it. So twenty quid, you will take off my, um, we'll put on some soft music, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do, 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 no, you don't, I, don't, I don't need it today. That's that's what I was saying to you yesterday. You always do you know it. what I mean? No, you, you don't. Need it. At the moment, I'm quite happy. Give it to a homeless person. Give it to a charity. Don't well, get him in here. Well, wait, 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 are you still going to shower with Johnny for a thousand pounds? Not now, because you said, and me and Steve are just going to stand in the corner and, and watch. Well, we've got to make sure you do it. You might go in there and just like wet your hair and come out, pay Johnny five hundred quid, and go. Yeah, we had a shower. How will we know? Sorry, I'm quite interested in about the shoe and sock. <laughs> I'm, I'm back to the- I'm back to the shower. You just have to wash yourselves. Now, we have to inspect that it's really clean, because we want you to wash certain parts really- Right, well, wh why have you both got to be in there, then? Well, no, just one of us. You? Can we just take- I mean, we, yeah. Or- or can, can Steve film it? <laughs> <laughs> as, as evidence. Just as evidence. Or we'll leave- I'll tell you what, we'll leave the DV camera in there. We neither of us to be in there, and then we can just watch the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are, are you a couple well, of I vendors? Be, I should- <laughs> Are you a couple of vendors? No. <laughs> 